Port Jefferson. This town has a whole lot of memories for me personally. I used to come here all the time when I was a little kid. To me, coming from Queens over here to Port Jefferson in Long Island felt like a magical place. It is surrounded by the ferry. It's also one of the very important touristic hubs here in Long Island. So today we're going to walk around Port Jefferson, but with a very special partner. We are joined by Discover Long Island and have the CEO of Discover Long Island, Kristen Reynolds. So Kristen, Yay, welcome. Thank you, welcome to Long Island. Thank you so much for welcoming us over here. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about Port Jefferson before we start walking around. Okay, so it's actually yeah. Port Jefferson Village and it's right here on the water. So where we are in Long mm -hmm. Island, because Long Island is a long island, it's 120 miles long. And on the North Shore is the Sound, the Long Island Sound, which mm -hmm. you see, and that's where we are. And then the South Shore is the Atlantic Ocean. So where we are right now is a little bit past halfway through Long Island on the North Shore. Oh, I see. And it's just a charming, adorable village uh, with a ferry that connects you right to Bridgeport, Connecticut. And so we get a lot of people coming back and forth from New England. Mm -hmm. And it's a wonderful family place to come and spend the day or spend the weekend, spend the summer. And today we're going to a lot of stops where you'll get an idea of where to spend it yes. as you're visiting Port Jefferson. And tell us very quickly, what is Discover Long Island? So Discover Long Island, yeah. we are the official tourism promotion mm -hmm. agency for the entire region of Long Island. So we both do Nassau and Suffolk counties. And you know, it's interesting, tourism on Long Island is a $6.3 billion industry. Oh okay. <laughs> and people don't realize yeah. it. Um, and we've got over 3 million people that live here on Long Island. And we always like to say, hashtag, we live where you vacation. Yeah, it's also, <laughs> yeah. It's also one of the most densely populated islands in all the US. So. Uh, Let's walk around and let us know where you're watching from and let us know when you visit New York City, where have you been in Long Island? Uh, I'm very curious where yeah, you've been same. in Long Island. Yeah. Alright, so let's go. Okay. Uh, so we're walking now towards, so here we see the ferry and later yes. we're going to talk about the ferry. Yeah. Right on the marina, yeah. you know, Port Jefferson Village and Port, the area yeah, well, let's has a... show the beautiful yeah. Uh, shipyard, shipyard building. Shipyard building. This is a great community center. This is where they'll have a lot of uh, community events. There's farmers markets. There's art shows. Um, in the winter, it's really great because the ice skating rink is right behind here. Right. And so all the kids from the area come here and ice skate. And you can have a water view while you're outside ice skating. It's awesome. That's amazing. And this this shows us uh, a lot of the original industry that was here in Port Jefferson, which is the shipbuilding yeah. industry. Yeah, there's a lot of maritime history on all of Long Island, to be honest. But uh, here, you know, when you're on the water, certainly the boat making is really important to the community and, and the right. culture. Right. So uh, this welcome center also functions for tourist reasons as well? So it is, uh, we do a lot of visitor uh, experiences yeah. here, but there is a Chamber of Commerce building is where the tourists go, which is more on the main street. I see. Okay. Yeah. Very awesome. Perfect. So, okay, I'm here in Port Jefferson and uh, I want to get on the water. I know, especially today. Yeah. It's kind of like hot and muggy, <laughs> but it's not raining, so that's good. But I, I don't know how to build the ship. <laughs> I know. Who does, right? Uh, well, there's a place. <laughs> <This guy. laughs> okay, we're, cool. We're going to take you in to meet uh, John, who yes. is a professional boat shipbuilder and they actually this building in and of itself has an awesome history and an awesome uh, connection to the culture and uh, the, the whole community came together to build this building so that mm. uh, and it's actually a nonprofit. they do a lot of boat building and repairs for free um, so here wow. come on in I'll, I'll introduce you yeah to John. that'll be amazing hello sir hello, John. John good to see you nice to meet you Nice to, to see, see you again. You again. Come on, hey, you nice Ariel. to see you again. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for inviting us over here. Again. Again, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. um, tell us a little bit about what, what happens here inside the Bales Boat Shop. Okay. Um, well, uh, we started the Bales Boat Shop in uh, 1995. And uh, I think we really went live about 1997. And what we do is to promote Basically, we want to promote, we want to promote uh, wooden boat building, the art of wooden boat building here uh, for everybody, actually. Mm. Um, we, um, Port Jefferson has such a rich maritime history on Long Island. You probably spoke about some of it uh, on, on your way over here. Yeah, we're going to see more of the signs of all the... But the maritime here. history yeah. here is rich, and boat building was an incredible part of it. Right. Uh, in Port Jefferson. They built over 500 ships here. 
And we want to keep that tradition alive. Mm. Uh, it kind of died down, and uh, right now we we hope that we can we can bring it back. So we through our small boat restoration and boat building programs, right. and that's what we do. And we have students, and we do it for families, and we do it with individuals. Oh, I see. And um, so families come over here and build their own boats, like we see over here. For example, this one. Well, this yeah. one, this one happens to be a project that we're doing yeah. for the shop. As a nonprofit, oh. we got to make money. Right, right, of course. <laughs> you know, yeah. and and last year was a tough year. So, um, this particular boat, we're it's a, a lightning class, and uh, we're restoring that, and hopefully we'll sell it. Mm. We've done that for other boats in the past. And who usually buys these type of boats? Anybody on Long Island. Long okay. Island is a big boating community. Right. So, and and this particular boat. Mm. is an international racing class. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're, cool. they're well received all around. So people are familiar with them. Same with the Comet up here. Okay. That was, a, that was a one we picked up. This was a donation, by the way. Yeah. Um, and this one we picked up, this is a Comet, which is another international class. So it's supposed to go very fast. Well, hence the name, or, or, or yeah. is it slower than this one? It's slower than this okay, one, okay. but this is definitely like a racing boat. We can actually boat. do this one, maybe. <laughs> we can do that, you know? That's how, right. we're, yeah. that's how we're ending the live video. <laughs> right. so, those are, yeah. so those are projects. Yeah, we'll finish it right now. Yeah. Uh, so those are, those are projects that we're doing for the shop to mm. help raise money. Then we have paying customers. Yeah, show us around, yeah. Uh, paying customers, for example, this one. This is an old, a, uh, a 1949 wooden canvas old town canoe, mm. which uh, the gentleman found us, walked in one day and said, I have this old, old town that was my grandfather's and my father's. And I'd like to restore it. Can you guys do it? And they, they said, that's what we do. Right. So he came in. Uh, we started this one about a month and a half, almost two months ago. And it's a complete restoration. We, will, we have to replace all these rib tips that you could see yeah. that they're all rotted. Um, so we're replacing rib tips. We're replacing the in whales. Which so we, this used to be on the water. Oh, yes. Yeah. This was a, a freshwater boat, boat uh, huh. built in 1949 by the Old Town Company. Wow, quite a while back. Yes. And interesting that you're restoring it as opposing to build a new one. Well, we could. We have built new canoes. Yeah. As a matter of fact, our raffle boat, which I, I want to make sure I mention to you, our raffle boat two years ago was a, a beautiful canoe, wooden strip canoe, mm. that received a lot of attention when we were raffling it off. And that was one of our most successful raffles. Mm. And uh, this one, um, this one obviously is a restoration, not built from scratch. Right. Um, but we do build boats from scratch. We build kit boats. Uh, we build them from plans. And can you show us just like briefly the tools you use to build them? Because I'm very curious about that. I think a lot of people would be curious about that. Well, yeah. uh, what we do use to build them. Uh, the biggest thing we use yeah. are saws and planes. Okay, so where All are right? they right now? Yeah, right right now them. we have, and these are traditional wood boat building tools. Yeah. All right. So, Ooh, okay. So obviously a drill press, drill, drill press, but wooden planes, a, a wooden planes are kind of our stock and trade just for smoothing wood. Yeah. So you know we use these. We use spoke shaves for cutting, shaving down wood. Um, and then are you getting the wood also local? We get the wood local. We have got it from uh, Roberts Plywood over mm -hmm. in I think Bohemia somewhere. And then we also have gone up to White Plains to Condon Lumber, which has a great source for boat building lumber. Oh, I see. Wow. Uh, we finished a 24-foot mast here just mm. last year, mm. which was uh, quite, a, quite an undertaking, but it, it, it turned out very well. Mm. So, you know, the planes, the spoke shaves, saws. Mm. Um, and John, I was telling Ariel earlier, like, what a great community that this is in Port Jefferson. And, and, and the cool thing about Long Island is it's made up of 119 different cities, towns, and villages. People don't realize that. And the village feel is that really community feel. And you can yeah. see the whole village came together from volunteers and put this building up from volunteers so that we could have this boat restoration nonprofit. Yes. And that's, that's just the community is really dedicated to preservation and preserving our history and being there for each other, right? Yes, it, this was a community effort, a, a major community effort. And a lot of people not only de dedicated and donated their time, but a lot of businesses donated their efforts too. Mm -hmm. All the electric was done as a donation. Uh, local uh, local uh, lumber yards donated their lumber at cost. 
to us. Uh, we had concrete foundations come in that were donations. So it was truly a community effort to put this together. That's beautiful that the community is coming together. Yeah, to it was like an old-fashioned yeah. barn raising. Yeah, you know. And uh, you think the boat tradition is staying alive here in Port Jefferson Village? Yes. Yeah. It's it's and it's even growing. A wooden boat building right now is is kind of going through a renaissance right now, mm -hmm. and uh, we want to be a part of it, and we want to get young people involved in it, mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons we started our education program. We're we're affiliated with Avalon Park and Preserve over here. Mm -hmm. They have a state program, which is students taking action for a uh, mm. some, tomorrow's environment. Right. So we're, we, we teamed with them, and as a part of their program, we have uh, 14 to 18 year olds come in, and we teach them the basic boat building skills. We didn't do it last year because of the pandemic, but we hope to start it again. And uh, we, in, 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 in the fall or September, we should start another program. And we build those boats. And they're pretty simple. We call it Boat Building 101. Yeah. We want to graduate that program to come up to Boat Building 201 so we can start using That's more <laughs> sophisticated tools yeah. Yeah. and more involved boat building skills. Right, right. now, it's, right it's kind of simple. Working our way up back to the, where we built a 700-ton ship here in Port Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think, I no, think we're kind of limited in size I here. I can imagine, but, yes, know, yes. No big but, barges in, in, the, in no, the front. No big barges. <laughs> we would like to build bigger boats here, but the yeah. shop doesn't allow us to do that. Our, our limit right now is 19 foot. So what's the, so 19 foot would be the bigger boat? It that would be the build. largest boat that okay. we've built here and normally build or restore, mm. you know. And restoring is such an important part of everything. You know, when people come to Long Island, they love it because they feel like it feels New England-esque, right? Like all these small villages and fun, but it's also got all the urban amenities. And we have another building I wanted to show you that has been completely restored and is now for the community for all the children. Fascinating. But that's okay. okay. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much for sure. showing us around. I, you're most welcome. Where can you're people find more information to build their own uh, boat? We have a website. Um, yeah. It's www.baylisboatshop.org or baylis or www.licec.org. Both of them will take you to the same place. And also, there's links on there to our Facebook page. Wonderful. And so people can, can just pop in out. and talk to you when you're here, right? You're right next to the Red Barn, and people can come by and just say hi. There's right. so many people that stop in here. Or peek yeah. in and see uh, yeah. the boat building in action. Exactly. Yeah. But, that's but, amazing. But by all means, I hope we can get the word out yeah. because there's so many people that come in here and they say, we had no idea you were here. Yes, I know. Well, this don't? is great, John. Thank you so much. Oh, we'll you're see quite you around welcome. the village. Yes, <laughs> I know. We'll, be, we'll be around. Right. Them one, one day. One of these. Oh, don't Sorry. forget that. <laughs> this is our raffle boat, by the way. Yeah. Our Santa paddle board, which we raffle off, we raffle off a boat every year. So this particular one will be raffled after our quick and dirty boat race, yeah. which I didn't tell you about, but you have a schedule here. Oh. Uh -huh. But that's a fun event that's open to everybody uh, for a small entry fee. But everybody gets the same materials. They have one morning to build a boat, and then the next morning they paint it and mm. we race it out here. Right. Some make it, some don't make it. <laughs> <laughs> and afterwards, we have the raffle for the boat. So this will be raffled off this year. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Very beautiful design as well. It's not quite finished yet, it's almost there. And gorgeous uh, woodworking, mm -hmm. too. Very well polished. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, I wonder who the lucky winner is going to be. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'll send you some raffle tickets we'll, and yeah. it should be you. Good idea. <laughs> should we do this on live video? Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have a great day. Okay, uh, bye John, thanks. in Saratoga Springs in upstate New York. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people on Long Island, especially on this part of the shore, will skip the drive right. all the way through the city and you just take the ferry and it's gorgeous. It's about an hour and 15 minutes. Well, and nice. then you drive through, I drove through uh, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and then ended up back in New York. Mm. <laughs> so, so people are also commuting from uh, Connecticut as well. Absolutely, yeah. a lot of people come from Connecticut and they'll, they won't, it's a car ferry, but you can also walk on and they'll walk right. on and then just spend the whole day here as a great like daycation and uh, and it's awesome
pro, pro tip for any tourists yeah. that are tra uh, traveling through all the cities in the mid-Atlantic mid and New England. Absolutely. We As you're going from New yeah. York, you can go along Long Island and then you can continue off to Boston. So uh, that's exactly, uh, that's yeah. exactly what we're going to say. For international visitors especially, you can fly into New York City, come down through, end up, go through New England, Boston, or vice versa. Start right. in Boston and go through New York City. Right. Have that be your grand finale. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I know. So here we have the Bales Chandlery, what used to be the Bales Chandlery. And this was built um, almost a century ago. And inside you mentioned that there's a really cool museum. Yeah, yeah. it's great. It's called the Explorium. Okay. Yeah, sure. and so we're going to explore it. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and while we're going in, you know, it's great for your yeah. um, viewers and listeners to know that Discover Long Island, they, they can find information about all of Long Island on yeah. our website. And we also have a YouTube channel, uh, just Long Island, Discover Long Island in Y. Right. And we have a show, as I'm wearing on my t-shirt, Long Island TV. Right. And uh, yeah, they can, they can tune in every week for new content. Mm. All right. All right, we're at the Explorium. All right, wonderful. And this is really cool. Talk about you, the maritime history carries through here, as you can see, yeah. with this giant boat, this ship hull like right in the middle. Mm. So you definitely know where you are. You're in Port Jefferson by the water. Hello, I can see you walking around. <laughs> Hi, Kristen. Nice to meet you, Lisa. Lisa, hey, this I'm is Ariel. Ariel. Nice to meet you. Nice to Hello, meet you welcome everyone. Thank yeah. you so much for welcoming us. Do you have the second mic? I do, yeah. So Here, I'll put it on. Sure. Short. Okay, go ahead. We have a huge production behind. Yes. So everyone give hearts to all the people behind the scenes. Yeah. There's a lot of people with a lot of hands behind the scenes. So. Well, you're doing wonderful work. Thank uh, you for coming by and welcome to the Long Island Explorium. Yeah. Tell us what, what is the Long Island Explorium as we're walking oh, through. Come on yeah. through. Um, so as you know, uh, we are in a historic building right on Port Jeff Harbor. Right. Um, the Long Island Explorium is a children's museum specializing mm -hmm. in science and STEM exploration and play. Oh, that's so, so cool. So it's a hands-on hands -on uh, approach. We uh, encourage um, constructive play. Yeah. So yeah. essentially doing, exploring, there's no one way to do something mm. explore. So it's, it's, it's been so hitting. important after the year that we've had, especially with children had, that have been virtual and remote and there's been a real lacking of any kind of hands-on learning and training. So this has been really popular with the families to come in where kids can actually touch and feel and learn. And we believe in early, um, early exposure to science, technology, engineering, math fields, as well as art, mm -hmm. um, engaging that, that spark and that interest in it early, it, it, it expands into so many other areas. Yes. So we're, we're kind of a hidden gem here. Yes, <laughs> um, it is beautiful We, we pack a lot into this, the space, so we have a number of activities. We like to say that we cater from zero to 99. So parents could come <laughs> explore yeah. and play as well as children. So I'll take you through. <laughs> so it's all, it could be all ages. All ages. Yeah. And uh, we've adapted it, um, since COVID. We have yeah. done um, virtual programs. We mm -hmm. go to the school districts. We are opening up June 19th um, for our regular public hours on the weekends. We're very excited. We're running summer camps. Mm -hmm. And um, that's so wonderful. Yeah. And then uh, what was this? Uh, this uh, makeshift boat over here. This is, this is our communication center. So yeah. this has been kind of, for anyone who's been to the Explorium in the past, this okay. is kind of one of our mainstays. Oh, cool. um, so as a communication center, children go here. They'll pass messages back and forth. Um, we have Bernie the robot there that, that's programming. We have a maker space in which they do hands-on crafts so they construct something. Um, all our stations or exhibits change throughout the year and they swap out. We do themes events. Mm -hmm. We also run the Long Island Makers Fair um, oh. June. Unfortunately, well, last year... Can you we, let everyone know what is a Makers Fair ah, for people who are international? Uh, the Long yeah. Island Makers Fair is essentially considered the, the greatest uh, show and tell on earth. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. I like yes. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, makers are people from all walks, walks of life, uh, whether they're mm -hmm. um, scientists, engineers, arts and crafts, whoever creates something and um, develops it and wants to share it. Um, as a learning uh, opportunity right. or craft opportunity is invited. So we have scientists come in, we have biologists, we have people making jewelry, we have people making wood art, we have people cosplaying. So we do that um, annually. Uh, mm. This year we're doing smaller maker fair um, mini events during right. the summer. So we're going to be inviting makers directly to the Long Island Explorium or participating virtually through our camps. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. I like that a lot of people can 
again reconnect with building with their hands. Yes, and the yeah. maker community has been uh, with us uh, has been very incredible during the pandemic with um, doing things yeah. for the community and creating different things. And mm. and people don't realize, um, Ariel, that yeah. Long Island is made up of a tremendous amount of farmland. Because you talk yes. about it being most dense islands, yes. but the further east you go, it's really farms. Mm. And so we do a lot of makers and farm uh, mm. farm to table and farmers markets. Yes. We there's it's a very much in our culture and our community to buy from the local grower or maker and people really love that personal experience and we have um, a strong connection with sustainability mm -hmm. uh, we do a lot of programs that advocate and teach children and adults in regards to sustainability practices on Long Island especially yeah. since we're so near our waterways right here that we want to take care of that of so course, it's all part yeah. of what we do so we try to do environmentalist um, activities educational activities um, craft activities, everything all in one. So oh. we pack a lot of punch <laughs> and small The other bit. thing, I'm sorry, Aaron, the other no, thing. No, oh, sorry, sorry, but <laughs> also it, all in this historic building where yeah, uh, right. people themselves, they were older, but they were also making things with they've, the, they've whatever seen. they bought in the Chandlery. Yeah. Yes. So what were you about to say? I was going to say, yeah. you know, speaking of education and STEM, one of Long Island's most uh, pr prideful uh, accomplishments is our schools. Yeah. I mean, Long Island is known for having some of the best schools in the country, and the parents and the community invest tremendously in the schools and the students. So education is really, um, it's, it's important here, and it's really prioritized. So. Right. That's amazing. Yeah. And what's this room over here for this our final <laughs> stop on this, this grand tour? So you've seen some of our exhibits. As a little kid, this, this place might seem very huge as well. Yes. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of little nooks and crannies too. Yeah. So this is uh, what's well considered designed. our traditionally our maker space. Oh, and cool. you'll notice also I'll around you'll here, see yeah. artwork. Um, we have local artists from the community that are exhibiting with us with our Resil Resilience Project until yeah. Saturday. So they've all um, given their time and efforts and their um, these artworks are available for sale on our website until sat until this weekend oh. in regards to as a fundraiser for the Explorium. But this is our makerspace. Children will come here. There will usually be a theme, some sort of theme activity, um, science-based uh, craft that mm. they could do hands-on here. And then oh. while they're walking around, there will be some other experiments. This past weekend, we had Worm Weekend <laughs> in which there was lime worms. Ew. that they. <laughs> they did. And you'd be surprised how well the kids got into it. They, they had fun. They, we had gloves. <laughs> um, <laughs> and they were able to measure the worms, see which, which, um, which atmosphere mm -hmm. they like better, uh, what type of environment. So it got them to, yeah. to ask questions. We basically want them to question and explore their world. Um, mm. Learning should be fun. Without that passion, for it, it, it's not going to make a deeper connection mm -hmm. and create a lifelong pursuit of it. So that is our goal is to, to make it fun, make it something that they want to do and explore because we're all part of this. Oh one. my God, yeah, that's basically what I do. My mission statement, if I were to have one on Urbanist is, I call it exploring cities. It's about oh. exploring. It's not, I, I love it, no. And not so, so academic, it's more about being there. And, yeah. and everything I assume is, 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 kids is, need that balance. Yes. Yeah. And I was even looking when I go around Long Island, just even looking at the architecture. Right. All of that is just part of what we see, and is is visually it it tells a story. So I, oh, I love wonderful. that too. Oh, then where could where could people find more about the Explorium? The Explorium, yeah. uh, our website uh, www.longislandexplorium.org. Uh, you could also follow us on all our social media channels, which mm -hmm. I believe uh, you have <laughs> yes, all the information. They'll, they'll, they'll be down yes, below. Yes, we'll be there. Um, and my name is Lisa Rodriguez. Uh, you'll 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 find me on our website if anybody has any personal questions. We're, we're very accessible here and we're very happy to be part of this wonderful community. Oh, that's Lisa, thank you so much for thank inviting us Thank you for having over. us in. Uh, yes, check it out, especially you. if you're thank coming you. with kids. Yeah. <laughs> Have a great day. Thank you very much, take care. All right, now let's continue on the adventure. Yes. Through Port Jefferson. Mm -hmm. And I know, having uh, tuned in, that your viewers always like it when you go to the local coffee shop. Oh, yes. We, <laughs> right? Yes. Right. It's, it's quite necessary. Yeah, of course. And, and on Long Island... Uh, we, Ringing for the coffee. Yes. Yeah. And on Long Island, we say yeah. coffee. Coffee. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yes. This is you the Long Island accent. Yeah. Coffee. <laughs> so let's go, get a, let's go get a cup of coffee <laughs> at a place right across the street. This is actually the downtown area now that we're really getting into. And Yes. Cool so let's thing, show the beautiful yeah. architecture all surrounding us right now. Yeah. And it's oh. awesome for visitors because it's really, unlike a lot of other yeah. downtowns, it's not just one street back and forth. Yeah. It's a circle. It goes all the way around. Right. I think we should. We're holding up traffic, we're, so we, we should probably cross. Sorry. 
<laughs> I know. And, uh, we have a lot of historical homes all yes. surrounding us. Yes, right. Uh, some of them dating back to the 1800s. A few of them dating back even to the 1600s, which we might point out when we go a little bit further down into Main Street. Right. Yeah. So on this part of Main, on this part of the downtown, you have homes on one side yeah. and businesses on the other, and then we'll circle around and show you kind of the heart of the downtown. But this is locals. So let me mention one yeah, tidbit about the history. Right here we have, right here we have East Main Street, and East Main Street was the main thoroughfare for most of Port Jefferson's uh, life as a village. Uh, but soon we're going to visit the new modern thoroughfare, which is Main Street itself. Yeah. It's easy to find. If you get lost, it's just a circle. <laughs> but, but why do they have it over here? We noticed that the land is a little bit more elevated. And the land is a little bit more elevated was because this was more of the hills. But down below was known as the drowned meadow. And the entire village, or at least part of it, would flood. <laughs> yeah, and it, yeah. Still, it, it, it still, still does, does flood oh, yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Oh, no. Hi, guys. Ace. All right, let's go have All some right. coffee. 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 Some, <laughs> some gorgeous coffee. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. All right. Okay. So this is called Locals. So they can't get a better local coffee shop than Locals. So I assume they're local. They're local. Okay, cool. And also they do a lot of organic um, ingredients mm. as well as Again, just like everybody, we, we try to source from local farms and farmers whenever we can. So right. um, That's amazing. So yay. let's show the menu a little bit more. You're going to be main camp for, our, for the shoot. Perfect. Um, so let's show, show the menu. And it's beautiful. And they yeah. also Are have... a uh, customer? Like, yeah. I'm customer, yes. Where's the person? Yeah, Where's the person? there we go. Is this her? And they're also using okay. they're also using Cafe Vita, which is interesting from uh, from the Lower East Side. Oh. Yeah, that's yeah. so cool. That's awesome. <laughs> so keep keep it within almost within the island. Uh, uh, I'll have a cold brew, please, a uh, small one. And then we're gonna try one of the chocolate cakes. Ooh. Yeah, very quickly. Um, I'll have a cold brew as well. Do you add any like flavors onto that by chance? Yeah, we could do caramel, vanilla. Ooh, vanilla let's. Or pumpkin spice. Ooh, okay. I'll do vanilla. And cold take brew. the lead for just yes, a little got bit. It. Just a little bit. Chocolate cake and cold brew. And I think that'll do it. Perfect. No Thank you. So two cold brews and a little cake, right? Correct. Right. To Great. We'll get that taken care of if you want to start. Thank you. Any milk? I probably do. Um, I'm gonna assume he doesn't because he didn't ask for it. <laughs> Perfect. And I also heard that uh, the viewers love avocado toast, so I wanted to highlight that yes, that is on the menu, avocado toast. What are the other cakes that you have here? Typically we have banana nut, but right mm. now we just have the coffee cake and chocolate cake. Awesome. So I didn't know if you That's wanted amazing. milk in yours. No, black. I, I yeah. figured. I was like, he didn't say it, so I'm going to say no. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Where for me, awesome. my coffee yeah. is more of just, it's a vestibule for me to have the creamer and the flavor. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's really the purpose of coffee. It's a delivery device for, <laughs> exactly. for, for sugar and, and milk. Cheers. 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 All right. To some local coffee. That's good. Mm. That's oh, yeah. the energy that we're going to need to walk the right. rest of Port Jeff. And then, and then canoe off towards... <laughs> Yeah, towards exactly. the sound. Right. Yeah, which it's funny because it looks peaceful and I think a lot of people do try to do that. And then on the daily yeah. there's people that have to sometimes get rescued from the sound because it looks you think, Oh, I can see Connecticut right. from here. But you really have to be careful and make sure you respect the waterways when you come here and, and go through all the guidelines. Exactly. It's, right. It's important. It's rough seas. It could be rough seas. Well yeah. the ocean is a Thank powerful you so thing. Much. Thank you and so then, much. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Let's exit through here. Okay. Yeah, we'll go this way. Okay. Thank you. All right. So let's show a little bit of uh, in the shadow. Yeah. 
the show a little bit of uh, the coffee so people can see it. Oh, yeah. Um, Mine is, looks the exact right color, as you can tell. You wouldn't even know it was coffee. Also cold <laughs> brew, right? Cold brew. Oh, okay, cool. And I got vanilla and I got some milk. And that's the great thing here in Long Island. You could get a lot of flavor syrup. So if you're yeah. a fan of flavor coffee, you, you'll, yeah. be, you'll be in luck in Long Island. Yes. And uh, of course, I got a black coffee, black cold brew. Mm -hmm. And they're using Cafe Vita, which is nearby. So they're really keeping us local yep. within the region. That's the ferry. Did you hear it? Yes. That was a, that you people, that's not a horn, a car horn. That's actually the ferry leaving for Connecticut. It's not angry Long Islander. <laughs> well, no. you might have those too. I'm not going to say those don't exist. It's P.T. Barnum from yes. the grave. We'll talk a little bit right, about right, him right. a little yeah, later. 100%. And actually, feel free to grab okay, a slice. Okay, all right. I'm going to take a little bite. This is, this, yeah, so I've been saving up all so day. So we're trying this cake. Look at that. Mm -hmm. So you got to accompany coffee with some cake, mm -hmm. of course. And the good thing about it is it's not very sweet. Mm -hmm. That's the reason I don't usually get a lot of cakes because it's too mm. sugary and sweet. It's just, it's the perfect kind of just sweetness. Right. To match your coffee, I think. It's more light and subtle. Mm-hmm. Like cocoa, like actual cocoa. Right. Instead of sugar, I think. Exactly. It's a little bit more subtle. It's a little bit more, um, better combination with the coffee. Yeah, I think so. It'll Especially give you more energy. my coffee's sweet, so I don't need it. <laughs> right. Because back in the day, they used to, um, the sailors and the people who would build the ships would uh, get pies, handmade, pie, homemade pies here nearby where we're going to walk on Main Street. Mm. But instead of pie, we're going to grab you some chocolate cake. Yeah, in exactly. order to, to exactly. sustain the journey. Pie's hard to yeah. eat on the go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, so cake is definitely a better choice. So we'll start walking towards the, like you said, the newer Main Street. Um, and along the way, if you'd like, I can point out a couple things. Please do. And I know you, this again, having uh, spent a lot of your childhood here, you know a lot about it as well. Um, but this, right across the street here, this is actually, on both sides, is Danford's Hotel. It's actually, believe it or not, we're surrounded by water on Long Island, but there's not that many hotels on mm. the waterfront or dining on the waterfront. So Danford is one of the most popular hotels in the area because it's connected to the water. And it's also historic. So this is a great spot uh, for people who want a little bit of a quieter trip in Long Island because Long Island offers that variety. Yeah. Where you have more of the nightlife hubs of Long Beach and Freeport. Yes, closer or to the city. Right. right. The closer you get to New York City, it's more urban and it's more densely. And then the closer right. you get out to what we call the end, yeah. the east end, which are the two forks, because it's it's like a fish that has two tails. Exactly. And there's the north fork, which is vineyards and farms. And the south fork is, of course, the famed Hamptons. Oh, so they're not referring to eating lobster roll. <laughs> no. No, oh, okay. no, no, no. So, but it's great because the further you get out, the more it, it's like really rural. And I think a lot of people are surprised that Long Island does have such diversity right um so you get to kind of some of the buildings here but we're going to actually uh if it's okay we're going to end at danford's um yes. when we when we finish because this is a it's like our local hot spot right where right. you go and you have a drink on the water it's about as exciting as it gets around here which <laughs> i like you know what i mean, well, I mean that's, if you don't that's like what the people are looking bustle. for right 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 some people are looking for that. some people yeah so. So, uh, and that's why I love that as a little kid, but also there's there's vibrancy here. Yes. Uh, we're today on the Wednesday because it's a little bit more calmer and relaxed mm -hmm. on purpose because yes. live videos on a crazy hectic day, is a, yeah. it's, a, it's a different live video. I'm telling you, the weekends uh, here are popping. But it's popping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very crowded and, and it's a great crowd because like she was saying, it's all ages. You get families, you get singles. Hi, ladies. Right. Um, this is a great restaurant. It's actually, again, it's one that opens up. It's seasonal only. It's called oh, cool. Steamers. And this is where you get your, not a lobster roll, but a whole lobster. Oh, fascinating. Yeah, you get the whole lobster, you get tons of seafood. Hey, how's it going? Hi, it's very popular amongst the locals. Yeah. And, and, yeah? Oh, no, uh, keep, uh, we're going to uh, see what people are saying in the comments in a bit. Oh, yeah. So let's uh, find out. Oh, I can't wait to hear the comments and the questions. I'm happy to answer We're going to find questions. out what people are saying in the comments. But what were you saying about Steam Room? So it's yeah. just, it's, it's really, it's one of the places because the thing about Long Island is we're, we're, we are a seasonal destination. So we go through winter and a lot of stuff closes down because the visitors aren't here. And so people anticipate it. So, you know, Memorial Weekend when, when our favorite restaurants mm, reopen we'll for the a summer. Bit of steam room, yeah. yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. And so people get really excited to come and hang out. And then it's again right across the street from the ferry. Um, and right next to it is again one of our most famous local places. It's called the Frigate. And you go inside, and what it reminds me of is Disneyland. <laughs> when you go, can we take a peek? In? Yeah, let's, let's go. Let's go in. check it out. It's 
amazing. The first time I came in here, my kids were like, they were so happy that we moved here because they were like, yeah. we love it. <laughs> um, you get everything from candy to gelato to cakes. They even have dog treats, oh, dog classic. sweets in here. Um, so when we go in, you'll see so that. So let's, um, yeah. we'll just peek in. After, after you, yeah. What right, do you think? Beautiful. What? what do you think? I mean, it's right? Beautiful. Does yeah. this remind you? This reminds me of when I'm in Disneyland and you go in and like everything looks delicious and right. beautiful. Not just delicious, but also aesthetically it's beautiful. Gigantic. Let's show around. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. here's the dog treat area that I was talking about, which is also really popular. The oh. little fire hydrants. <laughs> Aren't they so cute? There's a little pizza. <laughs> Which is also something like you buy your dog a little happy birthday treat. Oh, <laughs> oh, these know. are dog treats. These are dog treats. Oh my god, that's so adorable. I know, I love it. Uh, so and they have the red velvet cake, which always people are buying as well. I mean, honestly, I, I can't imagine what they don't have here. Yeah. They have cake pops, they have cupcakes, mm -hmm. they have the ice cream over here. They have fudge. And I remember fudge. this from my childhood, so this has been around. It's been for it's a staple. A while, it yeah. really is, and yeah. I think. Everybody that's been here remembers it from their childhood because you come in here and you just your the kids' eyes just they just get so they double in size. People don't realize, but like ice cream culture came from New York, the state itself. Yeah, that's that's this is the where it started. Yes, you know, just in general. The, the state. Yeah, and as far as Long Island, uh, one of the interesting things about Long Island ice cream in particular yeah. is that you get the ice cream mm. cone. And then they dip it, the whole thing, in sprinkles. Mm. And so it's, there's not an ounce covered. It's like covered in sprinkles. That's right. a very we'll Long Island way to ice yeah. cream. Beautiful. Yeah, fun, right? All right, so let's see what our people say in the comments. So uh, everyone give hearts to Aiden, who's behind the camera. I'm going to uh, turn the camera on Aiden. <laughs> Aiden, say hello. And uh, Joe is also on camera. Joe is also manning the second camera. So give hearts to him. And Cliff is going to let us know a few comments. We do. As a matter of fact, you have people saying hi from all over the world, and people oh, that's are okay. so. Let's cross over here, Ariel. So let's say hi to a few people. Who... Oh. Yeah. So Wendy say says hi. hi. Yeah. Stop, Adam stop. says hi, and George says hi. Hey, and then you George. Get people... Hey, how's it going? Wendy, Welcome, Adam. George. And then you get people going. I want to move there. Yes, you should move here. <laughs> yes. In fact, it's, I, 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 you have one person. I think it was uh, uh, Lorraine says, "I want to be there right now." <laughs> I Boring, understand. It's awesome, over. right? What, what are the easiest ways to get to Port Jefferson? There's, oh, there's so three main paths. So that's right? the greatest thing yeah. about getting here, and, and actually all in Long Island, because there's a train. The Long Island Railroad has 124 stops from Manhattan, from Penn Station. Yes. And we're going to open up from actually Grand Central starting in 2022. Oh, well, that's exciting. Yeah, Eastside Access is brand new. It's okay. been a 20-year project, so it's going to be awesome. The Be largest commuter rail yeah. in all the U.S. It's true. Yeah. And, and it yeah. was actually built to get people to go to Boston. And then they realized, oh, my God, everyone wants to come out and use it for vacation. <laughs> right. And so it stops everywhere. So there is a Long Island Railroad stop in Port Jefferson. Right. Up, it, it, it's walkable, but it's kind of a longer walk. So you might have to Uber it mm -hmm. down to this section. Um, Which is accessible can, over here. Easy, yeah. easy to do. Um, or you drive mm -hmm. from New York City, anywhere, or you take the ferry. Right. Or you can swim. Or you can swim. But yeah. not, not recommended. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I don't think there's a, there's not really sharks uh, right. in the sound. No. Yeah. Every now and then they'll spot one, but so, usually they're more in the ocean. So Cliff, uh, who, who else? Right, so yeah. John has a really interesting question. John yeah. says, that's such an old town, Port Jefferson, yeah. but it's like other towns around this around the country do they pattern themselves after Port Jefferson because it's been around for so long well that's a great question so Port Jefferson dates back to the 1600s uh, 1682 is when the first uh, man settled here who was an Irish shoemaker by the name of John Rowe um, but I'm not sure that's a good question do you I think they you know towns it's, are inspired by each other I, I don't I think the cool thing about Long Island is that all of our different downtowns and villages have their yeah. own unique personality and they all have their own feel so Long Islanders love to go all around our own town our yeah. own island because each town you go to is different but I think most people feel like when they come here they feel like oh this feels like New England mm. you know and right. people are surprised by that well it also feels mid-Atlantic because yeah. mid-Atlantic has its own personality yeah, as well. Yeah, that's true. So I think we, we forget that um, that Long Island shares a lot in common with the coastline of New York City, with yep. the coastline of New Jersey, and Connecticut as well. We get a lot sorry, of people that to come to visit from the city yeah. in particular, and then they're like, 
oh, this is awesome. I'm going to buy a summer house. And then they're like, <laughs> and then I'm going to live in that summer house all year round. Because right. it turns out it's great. So, so let's show in front of us. We have yeah. uh, Main Street. Yes. And uh, after you, okay. Aiden, as well. So the reason we are having we a across. lot of cameras and it feels like we suddenly went high production is because we we're working with the Streamcast Network I think in conjunction with Discover Long Island. Yeah. Okay, so we'll cross over here. Well, yeah. we'll cross over here, don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> okay. All right, perfect. So you've got a lot of, uh, again, locally owned boutiques, mm -hmm. like this one, Christina's Handbags. Um, you don't see a lot of chains no. in our in our downtowns, especially our villages. And that's what's great. So you can go to each different village, whether right. you're in Huntington, which I know you've been in, uh, or Port Jefferson, or Farmingdale, or Patchogue, and they all have their own unique flavor that is very localized. I've done a few episodes in Long Island, but not that many because um, it's not obvious to most tourists to come here, mm -hmm. at least not yet. Yeah. Uh, because it hasn't reached like mainstream popularity, but I think it will get there very well, soon. Well, I think yeah. so. The Hamptons have, right? The Hamptons. So of people, course. when yeah. they think of Long Island, they think of the Hamptons or the North Fork, which is the vineyards. Because mm -hmm. we have over like 60 different vineyards in the North Fork, award-winning wines. Um, but so that's. And, but when you go further out there, it can be very traffic -y. It can be very crowded. It can be difficult to get a room sometimes or a restaurant reservation. So I think as the compression there happens, right. more people are exploring these other areas. So right. that's why it's so great that you're here showing your viewers things they can do without having to deal with all of that. So let me explain a little bit about Main Street. So let's uh, show Main Street. Main Street used to be a gigantic causeway, uh, many, many, many feet long, built by a captain, Captain Jones, who thought he wanted to extend the business for, for the port. Since this would flood twice a day, they needed something that they can access the port with. So at first it was a causeway, and it was called Jones Street. But when the village incorporated it, they translated it into Main Street, which we have here today. But we're about to pass by Hotel Square. And or at least according to Fort Jefferson, at that time in the late 1800s, they called this the center of hospitality. Yeah. Yeah. And this was one of the hotels over here where the Starbucks is currently located. <laughs> used to be one of the major hotels. So Aiden, let's show over here the, the Starbucks, right? The, especially the second floor. Yeah, the yeah. burritos is what it's called on the second floor. Again, a, another great uh, restaurant up there that has uh, water views. Right. And uh, really good. It's funny, they have their nachos are awesome because you order the nachos, but they're actually giant tostadas. Oh, that's fun. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> Everything a little bit different. This is a brand new, uh, we're still getting new restaurants opening and, and, and this is a brand new one that just opened the Whiskey Barrel. Mm. Uh, and then you have the Spy Coast here, which is, you know, is a play on the Culper Spy Ring, which yes. is from this area, right. if so, you want to tell about it. So right next door is Setauket uh, and George Washington hired spies from that area in order to gain intelligence on Britain, who yes. was based in Long Island, or at least took over it for quite a while. So we're going to stop over here in this corner. Yeah, well, first yeah. of all, Ariel, you got to say Setauket. Setauket, <laughs> okay. And there was actually a show about the spy ring yeah. called Turn. Yes. Uh, it was a multi-year series, mm -hmm. and it was really wildly popular. And I mean, it really was the turning point of the Revolutionary War. Mm. Uh, the spies, the, the rumor is, right, is that the spies would communicate on their laundry via clothespins in code. And that's how Washington knew what was happening with the army. Right. Yeah, and, so and potentially in cahoots with Hercules Mulligan, who was featured in Hamilton, who right. sewed those spy secrets into the clothes. Yeah, so it's really cool. Yeah. And, and the other thing about Port Jefferson and a lot of our downtowns is we have a lot of local art that's kind of like, it's hidden around. So you'll see it on, mm -hmm. you know, it used to be like utility boxes or something, they, they, they beautify it with local art. So this is something Discover Long Island actually did. We um, partnered with a local artist from Greenport. Mm -hmm. Her name is Carabella. You can Beautiful. see her Instagram right here. She's gorgeous, first of all, so talented. You love her, all of her art. And we did these angel wings, and she put inside the wings things about this area of Long Island, like the East End. We have another pair of wings in Long Beach, and it has different uh, depictions of things closer to the city. Mm. But these, you know, we wanted to do angel wings. But these are actually t made to look like osprey wings, which is the osprey bird, which is the official bird of Long Island. 
fascinating. <laughs> yeah, so people don't know that, yeah. but we should get our picture in front of Osprey. it. Yeah, think? yeah, let's, let's do it, yeah. Should we put, our, let's, uh, after put our coffee down? That you can throw away. Yeah. He's All like, right. come on over. No, we do it together. All right, let's do it. <laughs> I know. All right. <laughs> well, this, this would be a good thumbnail shot. Yeah. <laughs> and so everybody gets their picture with the wings. Yeah. <laughs> and and then you tag Discover Long Island, mm -hmm. and then we share it on our stuff. Oh, cool. And it's it's been awesome. There was some uh, a girl the other day that posted a picture, and she had just lost a hundred pounds. Mm. And she said, "What a great metamorphosis show of what I've been through." And it was just such a wonderful story. So we love it. Oh, that's beautiful. And there's a few other details. Yeah. Uh, like the lobster. Yes. Which is the also fairy, you see? well eaten in, in Manhattan and uh, Long Island. Yep. In. Um, the the lifeguard yeah yeah the, the lifeguard beach chair you know there's a it's funny yeah. the big story on Long Island right now yeah. is there's a shortage of lifeguards mm. this is our crisis going into summer oh no because uh, we've got so much beach and swimming pools and outdoor yeah. activity and uh, a lot of the kids weren't trained because of last year right so that's that's the big story I just think it's so funny like lifeguard shortage everybody look out <laughs> but pumpkins for the farms. Um, this is Montauk Lighthouse. Oh, that's Montauk, okay. Yeah, which Poor is... Poor Jeff has its own lighthouse, right? Poor Jeff has, a, oh, I don't know, is it a working one. lighthouse? Yeah. Um, but But this is probably, this is one of only four national landmarks that are lighthouses in the country. This that's was commissioned it. by George Washington. Mm -hmm. There's an incredible story about the lighthouse, how it almost fell onto a cliff and it was yeah. saved. Anyway, it's right. uh, people come from all over the world to see the Montauk Lighthouse. Mm. That's amazing. I love it. And it's the very <laughs> tip of Montauk, so yeah. right before the... You go into the ocean, so it's called the end. The end, okay. <laughs> when people say the That's end. That's a no more Long Island. This is a Long Island thing. You, you got to act like you know what's going on. The, the right. end, they're talking about Montauk. Popularized in the show called The Affair. The Showtime. Affair, yes. Yeah. We were just so, talking about it. We have a podcast called Long Island Tea. Oh, yes. And we were just talking about one of the things. There's a, a very, uh, the famous restaurant called Lunch. Mm. All Long Islanders know we call it the lobster roll. Oh, but the sign says lunch. So if you call it lunch, you're immediately, like, everyone knows you're a tourist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting. I yes. thought it was the other way around. Okay. No. So anyway. <laughs> so this is what used to be known as Hotel Square. This is, was the first National Bank of Port Jefferson built in the 1900s. And it's one of the best kept buildings in this area. Very beautiful as well. With a huge turret right there in the corner. Now it's a clothing store, but you can actually, the changing room is something special, right? There's oh, a, she said it used to be a, a, a cell. A cell? A vault. Was okay. it a vault or a cell? Probably it was a vault. A, a vault. Because yeah. it was a jail too, wasn't it? They said it was a jail. I think a for big, a while. Yeah. yeah. And actually, I will tell you, I love this clothing store. Yeah. It is very on trend and really cute stuff. It's very boutique high-end. So let's pause over here. I want to show one piece of history after the UPS trucks passes by. <laughs> So this used to be the Townsend House Hotel. But before it was the Townsend House Hotel, I mentioned an Irish shoemaker moved over here by the name of John Rowe. He settled here and this was his original home. But throughout the two centuries, it was expanding, expanding, expanded from the 1600s all the way to the 1800s. And this was the premier hot spot back in the day for Port Jefferson. But now, later at the end of this tour, we're gonna go to the current hot spot in terms of hospitality or hotel, yeah. which is uh, yeah. Danford's. Danford's. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna get some food real quick. Cause I think we've worked up an appetite. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna turn a little with bit With this down. walk, but um, yeah, you can see it's, it's on a Wednesday afternoon, yeah. right? It's really bustling. And we were talking about this. This is a, like some fine cigars and smoke shop. But we couldn't figure out if there was a tie-in as to why there's specific smoke shops, a couple of them. <laughs> That's, but... I'm so curious about it. Yeah, I know. I guess it's also uh, older communities. Right, right, right. Here. I think you're right. So this is a, one of the more colorful church buildings here. It's no longer a church. It's a Masonic temple. But originally it was a church, one of the first churches to be built here in Port Jefferson. Uh, and it's also one of the older Masonic temples, I think, in Long Island. So do let us know in the comments because right there they have 1796 the date right there so oh there's your fire department no no yeah, atomic well, bomb <laughs> so this is what i was telling you uh, the fire department i mentioned is... the masons and that happened <laughs> I know. they're like uh-oh cue it i know so what was don't mention the masons it just happened. <laughs> what's the sound that's happening right now but the funny thing is the long island fire departments are yeah. also kind of unique that there are 119 different fire districts on Long Island and they're all volunteer firefighters. 
So that's Fascinate. actually more fire districts than New York City and Los Angeles combined. Oh wow! Yeah, that's and, a lot. And they love it. They, it's it's definitely like a, a milestone in the community. All the guys, all the dads, all the brothers. They want to be on the volunteer firefighters, and it's like a it's like a fraternity. It's like maybe the New Masons. I don't know. That's yeah. Well, <laughs> I know. They all know each other, or yeah. they, a, lot, a lot of them do. Yeah. It's like the hangout. A beautiful building. I love how they colored it. So, 1796. Maybe some of the founding fathers might have passed by. Who knows? Yeah. Well, Port Jefferson is named after Thomas Jefferson. Cue the music. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You're all about Hamilton because Broadway's right. coming back. Right. If you're so Hamilton, we're, we're excited. If you're a Hamilton lover, do combine Port Jeff with Setauket. Yeah. <laughs> Setauket. Setauket. <laughs> I know. So this this is... used to be Sawasset. So, oh, really? Yeah. Sawasset? That was the name of uh, Port Jeff before the indigenous name. Oh my gosh, yeah. I didn't even know that. This is awesome. But I love these local stores. So behind here are, again, some great restaurants, a, a wonderful local park. But um, we're going to go to Ruvo here because this is one of the local favorite. It's dining. You know, it, we don't really have fine dining. Yeah, let's pause over here. Yeah. yeah. yeah we don't we're have saying. fine dining on Long Island, but it's quality. I'll let you right? take the lead. Yeah. Okay. So Ruvo is one of the places that we go to. It's, it's delicious exquisite food prepared masterfully but you don't have to dress up or have any kind of you know put on any airs you just come in you enjoy yourself and uh and have delicious food right and then there's a lot of these restaurants hidden all, everywhere in ba these yes they're all kind of tucked alleys. into these yeah. little side parts of the buildings because there's not a lot of land right? right so you have to kind of create a restaurant where you can so there's this one right across the street is Old Fields. Right. Uh, also a very popular place. There's a few of them on Long Island. Mm. Uh, Port Jefferson is one of them. And then, you know, there's the Lobster House. Uh, all along this line, mm. there's a few restaurants. And, and this is where, again, you, if you don't have a reservation, you're going to probably wait on a weekend night. Right. But if you come during the week, you can luck out. Cool. So we're going to step inside? Yeah, sure. Let's go inside. Wonderful. OK. Are we going inside? Yeah, yeah we're, we're going to actually inside. show a little bit real quick. Yeah, that's OK. We'll go in. Thank this you. This is beautiful to see inside. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Yeah, a... oh, beautiful. Isn't it nice? And if, if you want to walk all the way out, we'll show a little bit in yeah. here. So and we'll then show we'll be on the patio. Yeah, let's just show them inside. Again, really uh, local community feel. You see like the tin ceilings and the brickwork um, and the woodwork in here. You know it's kind of a historic place, but it's also, it feels very clean and modern and updated. And look, That's it's very busy on a Wednesday afternoon. Look at this. Busy. It smells good. Oh I know. God. I know. It smells good. Thank you. Welcome. It's a gorgeous Ooh. day, so I thought we'd hang out Thank outside. So Absolutely. Oh, I love this. Yeah, very nice, right? This is very nice, yeah. And, uh, you know, you can't be on Long Island. That's how you say it, Long Island. Long without Island. Without having a Long Island iced tea. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, yes. So a Long Island iced Long, tea. You say it like Lawn, L-A-W-N, yeah. Guyland, G-Y. That's how we say it. It's Long Island. So Cliff, sit down. Let's uh, yeah, answer Cliff, some, come que on over. some questions. This is uh, fun. Some comments. Sure. So everyone, this is Cliff. He's the man behind the camera who's helping produce this entire show. Um, this is dangerous well. because, have you ever had one? No, I have never had. So that has a big stereotype for mm. it being very, very deceiving. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't Just like Washington guys, Spies. How you guys are going to do the rest of the show. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of those because it's got, I think, like six different liquors in right. it. Pretty much every liquor you can think of. But it tastes really sweet, like sweet tea. Mm-hmm. It's delicious. Sweet and tight. Which is what makes it, yeah, which is what makes it scary. So it's very sugary. This is a Long Island, Long Island iced tea, very popular here Yes. in Long Island. It's probably popular in basically every bar yeah. in America. Uh, <laughs> it started during the disco era in the 1970s on the south shore of Long Island oh, at a very famous bar, disco tech down there called the OBI. OBI, okay. Yeah, and that's where it originated, around 1976, 77. So Not that I was alive then. <laughs> you know what, we just, it's funny, and we had a, um, a place called Franklin, Tennessee a couple years ago that tried to say that they invented the Long Island iced tea <laughs> because they have a place there called Long Island, and they did a whole social media thing, and we shut it down. We actually had a contest, and we had them come out, and we made our Long Island iced tea, and they made theirs, and let's just be honest, Franklin, Tennessee. No, you were not the home of the Long Island iced tea. Yeah. It's Long Island, New York. Yeah, that's... Uh... <laughs> we won. 
It's like Los Angeles claiming the Manhattan cocktail. So right, like, you can't do it. Like, you can't I was do like, it. no, nice like, try. Like it's in the name. Nice try. Yeah. <laughs> and and um, so it's very sweet as well. And yeah. it, it has some actual iced tea, I can tell. A little bit, yes. But uh, there's but, something that gives it that tea coloring. Yeah, it's it's magical. I don't know, but, but be careful. It is a bit deceptive because uh, I taste the sweetness. It's almost a little bit too sweet. Right, because you don't taste uh, the liquor. I don't taste and the I liquor. Think that's what does this have liquor? Is this juice? It does. It, it has liquor. Uh oh. It, this has liquor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, it um, does. So I'm, I'm saying that because you, you can't know, tell. You, if you're partying hard, you won't be able to tell. But you're not driving, so yeah. it's okay. Yeah. Right. Right, I, I came. Here, I came here via swimming. So, <laughs> well, we want to swim after sitting out here for <laughs> right. a while. I'll tell you that. I, was like, I, I might take a dip in the Long Island Sound at this point. So let's see what what people are saying in the comments. So, yeah. as, uh, Field says um, it has six different types of alcohol in yes. our Long Island iced tea. Yes. Six different types of alcohol. So let us know. Let us know what types of alcohol do you think it is. I'll guess one, and you guess one, and oh, we'll let uh, people guess the other. Okay, I'm going to say definitely vodka. I taste rum. Rum. Okay, and let uh, us know the four. Yeah, the four what are other the other ones? ones? Cause I don't. Uh... And where else are people saying in the comments? Well, actually, yeah. somebody, a guy named Pete, said. Um, he said, you know, it also seems like it could be a little bit of a college town. Yeah, you know, so we are located right next to Stony Brook University. Right. Uh, Stony Brook University has about I think twelve thousand students uh, from all over the world. Actually, um, we have a big. Uh, delegation from Asia here and it's one of the most renowned uh, science and medical colleges Joe. in the area. Joe, sorry to interrupt, let's show this uh, beautiful pizza over here. Yes. Everyone give hearts to Joe. Uh, he's been showing uh, awesome Thanks. details of the... So this is uh, yeah. this is the pancetta uh, flatbread. So you've got pancetta and you've got uh, some goat cheese I believe and some figs and some arugula. Oh fascinating. Yeah. Oh, that looks so beautiful. I love I love goat cheese personally, so Same. I'm, I'm extremely excited Same. for this. And, and look, we've got some more stuff coming out. Wow. I know. We're not going to leave here hungry, that's for sure. That is for you sure. You don't leave Long Island or Port Jefferson hungry. <laughs> I'll wrap mine to go. So no one's starving here. No. So you've got the, what is it, salmon? Yeah. Flounder. Flounder and shrimp. And then this is scallops and shrimp. Ah, scallops. You're the scallops. I know, I saw you light up. <laughs> it's it's my namesake. So, Viera yes. means scallops in Spanish oh, and awesome. in Portuguese. So, either either my descendants 20, 30 generations back were scallop farmers, or Viera also means truth. So, maybe they were just truth tellers. Yeah, yeah. or they're truth, right. truth, farm, truth scallop farmers. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> <I know. laughs> they knew the truth, which yes, was scallops. Which is scallops. <laughs> Can't go wrong with scallops. So, let's try the pancetta first. Okay. Yeah. Want me to put one on there? You're just going to grab it. That's fine, right? Just grab it, yeah. yeah. So, here in Long Island, do does one eat pizza with a fork and knife or no? Oh, my gosh. So, the, uh -oh. the, the, the big Long Island. Are those Island, fighting words? No. Okay. So, the big Long Island debate. Yeah. No, not a fork and knife for okay, sure. Cool. The debate is to fold it or not to fold it. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay, because so, okay. New York, New York yeah. is known for our pizza. Right. Some of the best New York pizza is right here on Long Island. It's right. amazing. And now that's fighting words. People will fight you for their best pizza place <laughs> and their best bagel joint. And almost everyone says their neighborhood joint. Of course. Yeah. But then you, you know, then the big debate is: Do you fold it and eat it? Because mm. it's floppy. You know, Newark pizza is like more. It's more. Um, it's flexible. Right. Or do you keep it straight? What do you do? I usually fold it if it's a New York style pizza. You do. Yeah. See, I I'm, I keep it straight, but I'm from I'm not from New York originally, so that's like a thing. If I'm really really hungry, I want to extend the pizza's mm. lifetime, mm -hmm. then I would mm -hmm. not fold it. Yeah. Right. There, there was a scene in Saturday Night Fever where yeah. John Travolta not only does he fold it, but he gets two slices and folds the two slices. T yes. And I, then watch him put that in his mouth. I did yes. that on live video. Yeah. <laughs> I, I tried to I tried to John Travolta style. All right, let's try this okay. out. Mm -hmm. Adam wants to know if that's a, this is a typical Long Island lunch. Mm. What do you think? I think so. Mm -hmm. I, in fact, I was just here about a week ago and I ordered this exact same pizza, this flatbread. That's why I knew it was so good. But yeah, I think so. Um, you know, there's everything on Long Island from delis. Mm -hmm. Some people go to the deli and get a deli sandwich. We like our meatballs. Egg sandwiches from the deli. Yeah. Big deal. So that, that's a Long Island thing. When you say, tell me you're from Long Island without telling me you're from Long Island, bacon, egg, and cheese on a roll. Oh, yeah. And it's one word. <laughs> yeah. Bacon, mm -hmm. egg, and cheese on a roll. That's right. That's a breakfast. Hashtag. Right, Hashtag that's a breakfast. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is very good. It's uh, mm -hmm. The pancetta is very thick over here. Mm -hmm. Very, very thick pancetta. Um, and the fig adds just the sweetness that counteracts with mm -hmm. the goat cheese. Right. It's delicious. Yeah. Well, fig and goat cheese always go well together. So perfect. Yeah. It's like peanut butter and jelly. 
yeah. except the sea breed edition. So that's what I was saying yeah. earlier. When you go to a place like this, you're getting a, a high end experience mm -hmm. as far as culinary, but you don't have to. You don't have to dress up. You don't have to feel like you have to be fancy. You know, you can come in and just chill. Right. Right. And you're not paying New York City prices. Yes, Long Island is not cheap. It's not, no. It's not inexpensive, nope. uh, but it's certainly less expensive than New York City. Right. right. <laughs> I know, so. So, um, also keep in mind that um, that Long Island has a huge Italian-American population. Mm -hmm. Massive, so. I'm going to put this on here. Thank so you so you much. Get after this. I'm excited to see you taste your namesake. So, <laughs> so a lot of a lot of the cuisine here comes from some some people might have recipes that go back generations. Yes, yeah. and families. I mean, Family. yeah, yeah, these are mostly all family-owned businesses, mm -hmm. and so it is. It's it's handed down through the generations, and that's why I think people are so passionate mm -hmm. about you know their favorite places. Cool. Um, I don't have the information show right, that close. right now. Here we have uh, shrimp, we have scallops, and we have some risotto. Risotto, yeah. Mmm, fascinating. Mm -hmm. Some uh, mm -hmm. Italian rice, mm -hmm. I call. And some coleslaw. And look at those huge, huge shrimp. I know, awesome. These definitely come, well, they seem like they come from the sound because they're mm -hmm. very big. I don't think they yeah. come from the sound, but they, they might be from either local or New England. Okay, cool. Which is right across. Right. So, like, seafood here is, is crucial to, mm -hmm. to most of Long Island. Mm -hmm. The seafood, yeah. the fishing industry, um, both commercial and... So fresh. Flounder. Um, there's another one that I can't think of. If you know on the notes uh, what the other fish there's one. Do, do let us know what are the other top Yeah, there's another fishes. one that I can't Blue think fish in Long Island. Island. Blue fish, but there's one yeah. that's can, no, it, it, in the past. For some reason, it's not as glamorous as. Sea robins? No. Sea ugly. bass, but, but it's actually supposedly really tasty. But it just doesn't. A lot of it, it's funny, I was talking right. to some of the marketing people. It's just marketing. You know, people want the fish that's marketed, that has the nice name. And there's some other fish that's actually much cheaper and better, yeah. but doesn't have the notoriety. So, lobster, now, probably is one of the more expensive items you can find in most Long Island restaurants. Yes. It used to be known as a sea roach. <laughs> people, a people were so embarrassed by lobster that they would bury the shells in their backyard so their neighbors wouldn't know. The reason we have crime and punishment laws is because our prisoners in Massachusetts were fed too much lobster and, and they went to the Supreme Court. So now when you eat lobster, <laughs> look at that from that perspective. Um, and Long Island does make a great lobster. So let's try this. Yeah, I'm gonna take into the scallops. But I think uh, the scallops are underrated in general. Mm, not I've, enough people eat these beautiful scallops. Oh my gosh, they are delicious. And they're not that easy to cook all the way through right. and make them still be tender and not chewy. I read an article this morning that there's actually in Maine, there's a lobster shortage. People are freaking out, so the price of lobster is going up again. Oh no, that's, yeah. that's, that's mm -hmm. terrible. I, I hope it comes back. Okay, so the shrimp itself was very good, very very big, very tender. This is uh, very, very tender. Almost you can eat it with a spoon. Mm -hmm. That's how tender it is. And but the great thing about scallops, why I enjoy personally, is that they taste like little mini steaks. Mm. And they're hard to cook, so I can tell if a restaurant is good enough when they cook it well. I love the way it's brown. Mm -hmm. It's brown, yeah. And, and that should. takes a very hard because they have to cook it in such yeah. high heat. What's kind of marshmallow? It does, yeah. It's, a, it's basically a sure. fish marshmallow. I think you baked it. <laughs> it does, it kind of tastes like a marshmallow. Right, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. um, so let us know what people else are saying. Um, Lisa's going to get me information, but you have a bunch of people that are putting in the super chats. Oh, cool. So she's going to get me so information. So do let us know, though, super chatters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, Adam wants to know if the real estate's expensive here. Uh, yes. So. And taxes. <laughs> taxes, yes. So, so what I was saying earlier, saying earlier in fact, in there's a huge real estate boom mm -hmm. happening on Long Island right now because so many people want to move here, especially mm -hmm. after the pandemic. People are really rediscovering the suburbs, but we still have direct access to New York City. So right. you can get on a train and be in the city for the day, but still live here, which is uh, has become really popular. So houses go in a day, mm -hmm. and they're very expensive to begin with because you have more land and, um, and there's less uh, inventory, but Long Island is known for our taxes, oh, and the taxes are very high. Okay. 
Um, but interestingly enough, more than 70% of those taxes go to the schools. And that's why I said we really invest in education. And um, Long Islanders pride ourselves on doing that. We don't skimp on the children. And uh, the education, the schools are a lot of them Ivy League feeders. Um, it's very competitive. In fact, on uh, seniors on decision day will all wear their sweatshirts of the colleges that they've chosen. Um, so it's it's really important, but uh, the taxes, we have a fire district tax for all the volunteer firefighters. We have a water district tax, we have a library tax. You see, I think there's libraries everywhere. Um, almost every single village has their own library. Mm. And uh, again, it goes back to that you know, focus on books and, and learning. learning and reading. It's a very well-educated community and that puts a lot of emphasis on learning. Oh, that's amazing to hear. Oh, that's good to so hear So it's that. expensive, but I feel yeah. like people kind of feel like right. you get what you pay for. Right. And people live here for the quality of life mm -hmm. and the proximity to New York City and the proximity to the water and the ocean. Right. And the, that, that real community, small town feel. Right. Right. The colleges have come a really long way. Let me see the way. comments. I would love to see them. Okay. Um, like, um, we have plenty of time here, by the way. Oh, good. So, <laughs> plenty of time. I'm like, Cauli I might need to move over into the shade. I'm like no, no. melting. Cauliflower <laughs> box, thank you so much for uh, the $20 super chat. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. I have logs. Why is the Texas so high? Education yes. is very high. Uh, B. Griffin, nice to see you here. Uh, scallops are meat marshmallows. Basically, yes, they that are. That is such a great description. Uh, Aya says, please show some love by liking the stream. Yes, slam that like button right now as the fire department just slammed that <laughs> siren <laughs> before. Or the Masons. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Uh, yeah. George, save me some. George, yes. Yes, we've got a whole flounder, George. Where <laughs> are you? We're about to eat the flounder, so come <laughs> quick. Uh, camera work like old Brian De Palma movie. Yes. We're doing some crazy camera works. Diana some deep Lee focus. Uh, donated yeah. ten dollars. Oh, awesome! Oh, Tell, let us know what people are saying on Facebook. Uh, um, Adam, nice to see you here. Yummy, delish says Wendy. Wendy, it really is. And what's the real estate here? Yeah, oh, the real, real estate. estate. So uh, you know, I think the average house. We're in Suffolk County. It's just over about half a million dollars yeah. for a house, mm -hmm. and it might be a little bit more in Nassau County because the closer you go to the city, mm -hmm. the more the real estate goes up. Um, but again, you get you get what you pay for, and you get great libraries and small town feel and right. um, and urban urban amenities. Uh, George says no more cheek tacos. No, I think I think the the he's referencing my Mexico trip. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the food always here has boded well with me. Mm -hmm. I, I always feel good when eating the seafood here in Long yeah. Island. It's and very we, safe. Yeah. And, oh, of yeah. course. And we can get some good fish that. tacos here too. Sometime. You know yeah, what I mean? You can. can get some good tacos here. Mexican American food in Long Island mm -hmm. is, is amazing. I've had a few burrito places, especially in these smaller towns. Yep. Like the one here in Port Jeff, right yep. by the wings. Yeah. Really good uh, Mexican American food. It's the influence of the Latinos here. CB uh, Earth Day, thank you so much for tuning in. And also, Girl in the Curl, welcome. And um, the biggest problem with um, Poor Jeff is the, the drag racing. So, there is a sports racing scene, but that is for another different type of live stream. <laughs> uh, my, favorite, my favorite cocktail in the world says uh, Dave. Ooh, a Long Island tea? All right, Dave, you're brave, Dave. Dave, what are the other four ingredients? <laughs> and great looking f a flatbread. The flatbread oh, is truly so amazing. Good. Truly amazing. Well, we, when yeah. we were like talking about what to order, you know, with the Long Island is known for seafood, and we were talking about it, but I was like, this is my go-to. I'm like, Ariel, you got to try this. This is right. so good. It just it hits all of the all of the spots. So let's try this flounder. Okay. And says feed you. the camera guys. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we've got plenty. Camera guys. <laughs> camera guys. We're gonna get some down, forks guys. for you guys. Feel free. <laughs> Put the cameras down. We're pausing yes. the show. <laughs> yes, there's plenty. Camera guys are going to eat well. All right. You, are you, you want you? I yes. fed you last time, so why don't you dig in? All right. <laughs> it's the mom in me. You can tell I like cut up the food and serve it to you. Put it on your plate. Right. That's very nice of you. Thank you. <laughs> like that Appreciate was a total mom move. Can't help it. All right. Just so used to it. Let's try this flounder. Okay. Look at that beautiful flounder. And all the veggies underneath, these veggies wow. are gorgeous. You've got some broccolini, some yeah. carrots, and uh, this looks like some wild rice, which is nice. Again, you know, nice and it's got a, a delicious sauce, but a healthier mm. ingredients. Yeah, is it good? Oh my God. So I'm basically eating my best friend. Oh no. Well, because Ariel, the little mermaid. Oh, <laughs> funny. I was like. Flounder, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, and what <laughs> and is this called? <laughs> Remember, what? she's like, it, it's not a fork. It's a, a, a. She thought it was a hairbrush. Oh, uh, Triton? No, well, what because was it, it kind of looks like a Triton. But uh, I don't know the movie too well. To oh be my honest. gosh! You can tell uh, I have two <laughs> little girls. I'm like. I preempted everyone who's making those jokes. In the mm. At least we're not eating Sebastian. 
Yes, if you're in the comments and you know what Ariel called this. <laughs> Do less though. Because she had a name for all of it. Yeah. She, she would go on land. Yeah. Or if she would find things in the sea and that she wanted to go on land so bad and then she would dream up what this could be used for. Right. And in her mind, she didn't think about eating with fork, of course. Oh, with she used it with a brush. Oh, <laughs> I know. So what were people saying in uh, So uh, some of the more popular fishes, some of these people are saying, I'm, I've never heard of this, is cod here. Okay. Who said uh, that? Sea bass, scallops, and that was Joshua. Joshua. Paul says Thank swordfish. You. Swordfish. Uh, fluke. Kathy. Mm. It's fluke. That's what I was thinking of. Fluke. fluke. Okay. Right. Which is actually supposedly really delicious, but not as marketable. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So, um, so it's not a fluke. It's it's mm -mm. fluke is good. It's not a fluke, okay. right? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> to use the vocabulary, right? Um, and what else are people saying on Facebook? BA says, "Yum, looks good, even though I don't eat seafood." <laughs> you know what? Though? Let's check out the Facebook comments. Um, yeah. Is who said that? Diego. It was, I need uh, to get that phone BA. Back. BA. Yeah. Uh, the only reason I say that BA is because I believe it or not, because I'm not a native Long Islander, I don't eat a lot of seafood myself. Yeah. But the the when it's prepared well, it doesn't taste fishy at all. Right. I'm mean, like the scallops tasted like a steak mm -hmm. and the sauce came through. So you don't have to like seafood, I think, to like scallops. I don't think so. Yeah, I think uh, and even this even this flounder, it's not it's not like salmon. You don't you don't taste the fishiness. No, it doesn't it doesn't taste so fishy. And also it's very well condimented. Right. Yeah, uh, that's a good word. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a professional. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's very ooh, and it falls apart. Yeah, that's uh, how, that's how you know it's good. It's flaky. Very flaky, very well condimented. It also has a little bit of kick to it, so yeah. they condiment it well, so it does have a good taste to it. I told a funny story yeah. on our podcast the other day, um, and this is a true story, that I had my expensive designer purse, yeah. right? And as ladies, I was sitting at the bar, and it didn't fit on my chair, so I put it on the ground. Mm -hmm. And I was having some local fish and chips, which were delicious, and they were really flaky, and a piece kind of did that, kind of fell. And I, I, I thought I knew where it went, but I wasn't sure. The next day, I go to get my glasses out of my designer purse, Mm -hmm. and the fish smell so the fish had fallen into my purse oh, no, no. and stayed there overnight <laughs> i had to empty out my entire purse find the giant chunk of fish yeah and i still haven't used it since it still hasn't <laughs> aired out enough for me so make sure you know where your handbag is when you're eating <laughs> so if it falls it doesn't ruin your designer purse hashtag long island problems yeah hashtag, <laughs> hashtag long island life yes omar wants to know the name of that dish and joe joe come over here uh, in the shadow because <laughs> it is Omar, a very, very hot day. Come over yeah. here. Let's Omar, get close this up. Is, this is flounder. Keep showing the, the food. It's amazing. Is there a name oh. of that dish? Uh, is there is a it? name for the flounder and shrimp dish? Flounder and shrimp. Just called flounder and shrimp. We just there keep you go. it simple. Very you don't have yeah. to... We don't make you think about it. Just Kathy enough. is very jealous. Yeah. She says she lives in Chicago and she can't get flounder anywhere. Kathy oh, no, from Kathy. Chicago. Yeah. Kathy yes. Chicago, come over here to New York City. Yeah. Down to, to Long Island. To Long Island, yeah. yeah. My uh, my husband's uh, from Chicago, actually, so we go there a lot. It's awesome. You don't, you don't need to fly directly into New York City, by the way. You can fly to... Um, Long Island MacArthur Airport. Right yeah, there. you yeah. can. You can fly directly in. And, and um, Frontier has a direct flight seasonally to Chicago, yeah. but otherwise you come into you can come into LaGuardia. It's really inexpensive. Is there a Dickens festival in There is. Can oh my you, gosh. Someone wants to know about um so that yeah. would be hold on. Who is that that knows about the Dickens uh, festival? Oh yeah. Uh I think it was Kathy. I'm sorry, Matt. Matt? Matt mm. wants to know okay. about the Dickens festival. Yeah, good. And good. will it be on this year? So yeah, I think so. It it was cancelled last year because of COVID. All all festivals were, you know. Um but it's uh, Port Jefferson is very famous. One weekend in December every year the whole village transforms into a Dickens novel. Oh my God. Everybody dresses That's up amazing. like characters yeah. and yeah. there's horse and carriage rides and there are different stands everywhere. Mm. And um, there's like a hot cocoa. It's literally adorable. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, and it's just so funny because it's one of those small town things that it's very popular. Right. And there's a, there's a guy who dresses up as the chimney man for most of Dickens' novels. Where's, where's gloves? I, I listen to a podcast because there's a podcast about Long, Island's, Long Island history. Mm -hmm. It's called Long Island, Long Island history. history. It's a great podcast. It's a great podcast. And they, have, they wear gloves uh, that are 200 years old, back from the 1800s. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. really, and people were really upset. But the, again, it's all volunteer. The yeah. whole community comes out, volunteers, dresses up. Mm -hmm. And you feel like you've been transported. Talk about a great right. way at Christmas time. Right. And all the shops in the village are the, the windows are decorated. Mm. It's a great place to come for Christmas. And that almost happened in real life a hundred years ago because P.T. Barnum actually wanted to start his circus over here. 
Uh, mm. So we haven't chatted about him yet, but we're going to chat about him when we get to the ferry. Speaking uh, of famous yeah. people, Joe wants to know about um, George Washington and the Montauk Lighthouse. Yeah. Mm. So George Washington actually commissioned the Montauk Lighthouse. Uh, it was the first lighthouse he commissioned. Um, and again, a lot of it was because uh, the troops were coming over and coming from that area. Mm -hmm. um, and to this day, it's only one of four historic landmarks that are lighthouses in the nation. A lot of them, including one on the South Shore, uh, were destroyed mm. because they, they take a lot of upkeep. They take a lot of maintenance these days to have a lighthouse. And now you can replace it with a pole and a light. Um, so it took a, a huge community effort to save the Montauk Lighthouse many times. And in fact, is about to go through another restoration uh, through, I think, the, the Navy with, through a huge grant. But it's a great story, actually. There was a lady named Georgina Reed. Yeah. So there was originally 200 feet uh, when the lighthouse was built to the edge. But because of erosion, at one point in the 70s, there was about 55 feet and it was falling in. And everyone had just realized it was just going to fall in. There's nothing you oh, could no. do. Okay. Coast Guard had given up, the government, everybody, the locals, that's all that's going to happen. And they wrote an article about how it was going to fall into the ocean. And Georgina Reed was this lady from New York City mm -hmm. who had retired. Very short. Yeah, right. She was 4'11 or 4'10 yeah. and she was also in her 60s. Less than five feet, yeah. At the time. She had a house over here in Wading River on the North Shore and she read the article and she, she had patented a system of planting like reeds along the shoreline to stop erosion. Right. And it's funny, she wrote a book. Do you know what her book was called? No, no. What was it called? How to Hold Up a Bank. <laughs> <laughs> bank referring to the geological yes. formation. And yeah, uh, she came funny. and she single, yeah. she, she went every weekend and week for 15 years yeah. and she single-handedly saved the Montauk Lighthouse. That's amazing. Wow. That's a Pretty really awesome. cool group effort right There's there. a Long Island yeah. TV episode about it. If yeah. you want to go learn more, uh, you can. Yeah. we have the historical photographs. We tell you the whole story yeah. from the erosion expert. It's really awesome. Isn't so what, as I grab one more oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. piece over, over here. here. Tell Isn't us. that what's going on with the Cedar Point Lighthouse? Are they trying to restore that? I'm not sure. I don't know what they're doing with that. But the other the other famous lighthouse on Long Island is the Fire Island Lighthouse. Yes, Robert, um, Robert Moses. Yes, it's Causeway. on the South Shore, and it's on the gateway to Fire Island, right. which is a, a barrier island. It runs 19, uh, there's 19 different villages. Mm. It runs the whole length of the island and it's cool because there's no cars allowed you can only get there by ferry mm -hmm. so it's a great place to just walk and pristine pristine beaches it's awesome also very popular with the lgbtq community mm -hmm. there used to be so uh, let's answer a few more questions yeah, yeah. jennifer we'll, we'll from the upper on. side of yeah. west side, upper east side of new york ask questions to kristen because yeah. she's a yeah expert i'm sorry well we'll see i don't know you Long guys probably island. sometimes yeah. some of you know more than i do i'm sure right she asks you know i really love the idea of going to uh port jefferson but i love the beaches yeah of the south shore yes is it easy for me being from new york to get from the south shore from the North Shore to the South Shore? So that's a great question. So the difference in the beaches, because it's, again, it's, a, it's an island. And so I said on the North Shore, it's the Sound, because mm -hmm. it connects to Connecticut. Those are called, those are rocky beaches. Right, Glacier. Beach, yes, glacier. right. And so the glacier split it, right? So all the beaches are really rocky. The locals love it because it feels more New Englandy. But the real pristine beaches, like she's saying, are on the South Shore, the sandy beaches that you picture. Mm. But there's only 20 miles between, it's 120 miles long, but there's 20 miles in width. So you can definitely, in fact, if you go straight across, you go to a, another village, which is awesome, very popular nightlife bars, restaurants called Patchog. Oh yeah. But they also have a ferry right there to Fire Island. Mm. And within 20 minutes, you can get on that ferry, you take it across, you're on an incredible pristine beach. Fascinating. So it's, it's called Long Island, not Fat Island. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, so that's uh, a good question, though. And you can town hop here, yep. as you just mentioned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just jump on the train, even. Oops. You can jump on the train. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can jump. You can town hop on the train nor uh, east west. But if you want to go north south, I recommend a car. Yeah, or yeah. an Uber. Or There's Uber. plenty of Ubers. Right. I know we're in Port Jefferson, and I know this is jumping ahead, but you did get a good question from John about wineries on Long Island. Yes. Um, so we do have great wineries on Long Island. There's 57 different distinct vineyards, um, winemakers, and um, award-winning wines. Like, uh, in fact, if you if you go if you're in Wine Spectator this month, right. there's a whole article in Wine Spectator right now about the North Fork of Long Island and how great the wines are and how much we've matured. They started in the 70s, mm -hmm. like 73, and in fact, we're going to take you to one of them. Uh, the first uh, winemaker and the largest distributor on Long Island is called Pindar. Mm -hmm. It was started by doctor, a doctor here in this area, Dr. Damianos, and he realized that the soil is very similar to the soil that that flourishes in wine country. So right. we started going out there, and now then you had like the Intamins family, 
Um, a lot of famous people that come out and invest. There's a new newscaster out there. I can't remember his name. If you know his name, let me know. But he's from the city. He just came out there and bought a vineyard. There's one that was well, purchased by a family in Mexico. Uh, it used to be called Martha Clara, and now it's called RGNY. Mm. And they're uh, a Latin Mexican-owned winery. And, and the wines, you know, in the beginning, in any wine country, it starts off, yeah. right? But now it's really award-winning um, and acclaimed. Mm. The most popular one, in fact, is on the South Shore. It's called, one of the most popular ones is called Wolfer. Right. It's a German family who is very invested in Belmont Stakes. They have horses. They're an equestrian family. And uh, they have a, a rosé called Summer in a Bottle. Mm. Oh, and it's, okay. and it's, one of the it's one of the most award-winning popular. All the celebs drink it. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so let's move on to the next stop because we're going to yeah. try some interesting wines. Yeah, let's and go then, talk about wine country. It's a good question. Right, right. I'm very curious about why Long Island is such a popular wine spot for winos. <laughs> why, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We loved it. We loved a summer, you right, know, and precisely. be outside. Right. And why is it rosé season? Maybe we'll answer all those burning questions. Yes. Christian I'm, soon. Yeah. BA yeah. wants to know yeah. when you moved here and from where. Oh, okay. Um, I moved here, it'll be six years in November, and I actually came from the great state of Arizona. So I moved from the desert oh, to an oasis. Yes. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I've been living here the, my entire life in the, on the island, uh, but not in Long Island. I've been living in the island of Long Island, but not in on Long Island. On the island. Yes. Yes, because I um, grew up in Queens. All right, let's go. Thank you. Thank you so much again. Have a great day. Okay. And you wouldn't know it, but uh, they're saying it's going to thunderstorm this afternoon. <laughs> it doesn't look like it. <laughs> you wouldn't know, yeah. right? But that's the thing. So when I was funny when I was driving yeah. back yesterday from Connecticut, from yeah. from Saratoga. Well, let's show the front, yeah. Yeah, Saratoga is also known for horse racing. Um, it's why, yeah. very famous. So, and I always think of that "You're So Vain" song. Right. Do you remember that when she's like, "I heard you had a." A horse in Saratoga, and your horse naturally won. Anyway, okay. I was driving back, and for 10 minutes... Long Island is attached to a lot of ballads as well, because <laughs> there's true. a lot of pop songs. Oh, there's a lot of musical history here, a lot. In fact, we always say the Long Island Sound, uh, not just a body of water. Right. Um, but, <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, so, uh, but it was raining so hard yeah. yesterday for like 10 minutes, I couldn't even see, and then it was immediately sunny. So that's the thing, is the weather will always straight change. Straight ahead, right? Yeah, we'll go straight ahead. Straight ahead. If you don't like the weather, just yeah. wait, just wait a minute. It'll be nice. Don't let a, a little bit of rain ruin your trip. So this is Oldfield Restaurant I was telling you about. So uh, let me interrupt yeah. you for one second. Yeah. If you want to get an idea how this area used to look like, this is it. It used to be a huge uh, swamp. So it's impressive how the town has changed in the past few centuries. Yes, so we'll go through here. And again, there's a front and a back. It, all these little crevices of places, little ducks taking a nap. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> and. Um, and also, like in the 1990s, or a little bit earlier, I think, they made the, what was called the parking district. So they made it very accessible for many Long Islanders yes. to come here during the day. Which yeah. is, it, it's good because in a lot of our downtowns, there's not a lot of parking. And so it's they, not as easy. They preserved, that. They, that's the great thing, is that mm -hmm. they preserved the Main Street rather than, than trying to yes. add parking to the Main Street. Yes. Which is a very smart idea. And especially during yeah. last year, a lot of Main Streets that even had parking along the sides did away with it. So, and right. they closed it down so that it's all walkable now. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. It is lovely. Do you see that happening more in Long Island? I do. In general? I do. Okay. It was something that was kind of born out of necessity last year when people wanted outdoor dining and they yeah. couldn't go indoors. And it was so popular and so successful that like a lot of things we learned hmm. were continuing, you know, right. like Zoom <laughs> or whatever. So um, yeah, we'll go down one more. So yeah. we're going around, right? Over we're going to go yeah. around here. So this is great. This is, this was, uh, originally recently located for years uh, further up the road closer to the train yeah it's called uh, the the pj fish market and the pj lobster right. house yeah and it just moved to this area which is much more accessible and there's actually a whole fish market inside with fresh seafood that you can just buy and take mm. or you can come in and have them prepare it for you right off the water so let's uh walk a little bit faster across the pj fish market <laughs> and and then we'll turn right uh, we'll turn and they've got Port Jeff yeah. Brewery right here down here, and then yeah. the, and the the famous uh, ice cream window, where you go up to the window and get your ice cream. Oh, fascinating! Okay. Yeah, which <laughs> which is very popular with the kids, yeah. and uh, 
honestly, it's like a line around the building during the summer. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. That's where you get the ones with the sprinkles I was telling you about. Oh, okay. The famous ice cream shop. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> There's a few of them here in this there, town. I mean, yeah. you, you throw a rock and you hit an amazing ice cream. Like you said, it's ice cream <laughs> culture, it's pizza, it's bagels. So it's a good thing we're walking it off. Right, right. <laughs> in between stops. There goes your boat down the road. Oh, that's amazing. And you see here again, art everywhere, you know, mm -hmm. around just, um, just kind of sharing that public love of art. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Yes. And sea turtles. And here we're back on Main Street. Yes, so we'll just cross. And speaking of ice cream, there's also the iconic Long Island ice Ralph's. cream, which is Ralph's. Yes. Yeah. Oh, they're going to... All right. On, thank you. So it's a very walkable downtown area. Yes. Yeah. All right. Very here. pedestrian friendly. So here we'll go into Pindar, which is the, the winemaker I was telling you about, um, which is great because... Most of the wineries, yeah. you have to go all the way to the North Fort to experience, and they're beautiful vineyards, but Pindar's from this area, his dad was from this area, mm. so they actually opened a tasting room right here so that you can get the experience without How's having to travel all the way yeah. out. Oh, that's amazing. Wow. Hello, thanks hey. for having us. Pleasure, welcome. Thank you. So, we got one for Cliff, too, it looks like. Let's, so what do we have here? Uh, let's, so, let me put this right on you. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much, man. Yeah, so what do we have here? So here we're doing the Pythagoras, which is our best-selling red wine. Okay. So it's a Greek family, right? So oh. you see a lot of the, oh yeah, the music, yeah, he's yes. doing it. Uh, uh. Okay, good. Yeah. So you get a lot of the Greek mythology, so Pythagoras. Yep, named right. after the mathematician. Oh, yes. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so we have that one. Then over here we have the white blend, which won uh, best white blend for New York in oh, the Governor's it. Cup. And then over here, the last one is the Gewürztraminer, mm. which won Best White Wine in the oh. Governor's Cup. So. Oh, okay, that's amazing. Yeah. And then mm. this third one over here. This one? Oh, this is the Pythagoras up here. Oh, okay. Oh, they're these all the are same. all the same. Okay. Yeah, 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 we did. We got, yeah. I said, we got, we got one three. for Cliff. Oh, we got one for Cliff, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cliff, do you want to drink on the job? <laughs> I'm, I'm you're, you're, you have one, have one tasting, yeah. Cliff. You don't have to finish it. So which one do you, what order do you think we should go? Uh, I would start with, I arranged them this way, basically, yeah. aesthetically, <laughs> but I would go with the whites first, um, start with the white blend. Okay, this one. White blend, okay. So Cliff will have one, because he is the designated driver, but he's going to try Cheers. one. Cheers. Yeah. So the white blend, Cheers. the white blend is a blend of oh, Viognier, God. Pinot Grigio, Sauvignon Blanc, <laughs> mm. and Riesling. Oh, that's Riesling. nice. It's all the nice white light wines mm. on a hot summer day. Yes, it's it a very refreshing white wine. Very refreshing, mm -hmm. right? It's Wild it's a punch of refreshing. Such a I know. Long they have way. They yeah. really have. Yeah, they yeah. absolutely. It's like the unsung region. It's true for wines. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's and again, if you're in Wine Spectator this month, you can see that in Sparkling Point is all champagne, and it has won incredible. I mean, it's beat out France and California for for sparkling. Mm. And then there's one called Criteau, and they do all different kinds of rosé. Mm. Um, so they all have different unique aspects. Um, but it's really, if you have tried Long Island wine in the past, and you know, like 20 years ago, 15 years ago, when you think, oh, I tried that. That's how California was, right? Until they had their big challenge. It's right. come a long way. It takes growth. It takes skill. So it's great. Mm -hmm. yeah, Long well, Island's kind of like how California was in the '60s before right. they really hit it big in like the '70s around. Yes. So. Fascinating. And this is uh, probably good for with fish, right? For yeah, it's ones. definitely yeah, a good a good fish one. Yeah. Like the the more mild ones are good with fish mm -hmm. or chicken things like that. Lighter meats. Right, right. And mm -hmm. then do you and use any of them for uh, cooking for adding something to uh, a meal? Um, the, the reds are usually yeah. a good cooking wine. The Pythagoras yeah. is a great one. Our Merlot is good as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. I so love delicious. the, uh, actually, Pinder has a great, you guys have a great brute too. Uh, yeah, the brute is very nice. It's yeah. really good. Mm -hmm. You want a nice champagne? Yeah, very so we're trying the This red is the Pythagorean oh, right. Pythagor uh, theory. Oh, no, the oh. other white. Yes, he says go with the other white. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what? No, no, it's okay. Uh, what, where, he where, says go with the white. I think it's probably good time to have Barbara come in. Oh, you want to talk to Barbara? Barbara, come have some wine. Great. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, yeah, sure, we'll do it. Yeah. We'll have a toast. Hi. Barbara is yeah. with the Port Jeff one? Village Chamber of Commerce. Yes. A great uh, partner and a great friend of ours. Yes, again. We so are thank you. Partners. So this is a, so this so what is Gewürztraminer. This is yes. a sweet wine then. It's uh, uh, in the middle. It's not sweet, but it's not too dry as well. Okay, so. Yeah. So that one, it's made Cheers. with rose. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I know. Cheers. Any, any questions for Barbara, too, because Barbara is truly ah. the 
expert. That's nice. Oh, that is nice. Mm. That is like that. sweeter. I like that very yes. much. Yeah. I mean, you know, Barbara's yeah. running for mayor, too. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> is it is a yeah, campaign they, secret? Well, not no, anymore, no, apparently. Not anymore. <laughs> it's public. The, Secret's the out. Word, the, word, the word is out. Yes, yeah. the election is in less than a week, so um, I've been working hard. You might be speaking oh, to the next it. mayor. There we oh, go, knows? right there. <laughs> that's very nice of you. <laughs> I don't know if that was real or not. If she was like, that's really nice of you. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I always get a little nervous. That's how you know it's all spontaneous. Yeah, it's absolutely. So, so what about any questions for Barbara? Because she's uh, she's the you know foremost yet. expert here. Not so yet. Bit. All right. Okay. Anything What's we didn't talk about yet? There were a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, she's like, why are you saying all of these things? Did you know that um, for the George H.W. Bush inauguration, they use lens wine at the inauguration? Yes, oh, I did know that. Lens wine, okay. And yeah. uh, Barbara yeah. Damianos. Yeah. Barbara Damianos, yes, yeah. Dan, Dr. Dan. Dr. Dan. She was telling me something, too, about like Hillary Clinton wrote, gave them some award just as well. It. They just received a wonderful award as well. That, yeah, he yeah no, 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 we're just holding it. Okay, so we great, got great, yeah. great. And I, I, you must know about it. You, yeah. you guys, yeah, he were, talked about the yes. governor's cups, right? Yes, the mm -hmm. governor's cup. That was wonderful. We put that in our newsletter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so we're very That's proud funny. of Pindar, and we're happy that you're here and a great retailer. Yeah, we're happy to be here. Thank you all so much. And yeah. you distribute, because uh, this is one of the biggest distributors. You can actually go, mm -hmm. if you go to the North Fork and tour the vineyard, the vineyard is beautiful, and they have live music under this terrace, and they have food trucks, and you can bring a picnic and spend yep. a day. Mm -hmm. You can actually do a tour behind the scenes, too, yep. of the bottling and the barrels and also duck walk yeah, yeah. So, so, duck walk yeah, as well, yeah, as well. Jason's. yes so. jason's yeah so, and, and jason's is uh, we just did a thing on it it's very dog friendly it's the, one of the most dog friendly mm, vineyards yeah. and i don't know if you know but pindar is the name of barbara's son mm. right pindar so the man as well yeah. right pindar the man as well absolutely oh, fascinating. so yes <laughs> so that's it's great. very nice and you can see them out there the funny thing yeah. and that's the thing again when you come here You'll yeah. probably see, you'll see Barbara walking around. Well, she downtown, lives in the village, you know. Yeah, she and lives in the village. yeah, I'm talking about you. Oh, like me. if they come here, oh, the other Barbara. Barbara. <laughs> people walk around and be like, "Hey, Barbara!" And she yeah, knows every, yeah, everybody yeah, knows. Yeah. And when you go to the vineyard, it's Pindar and his sister um, mm -hmm. Alethea, yeah. and Barbara there. Sometimes their mom. They're yeah. there. They're walking around. They're yeah. serving stuff. They're working. Yeah, so I, I it's really a great few business owners who work harder than them. Honestly, yeah. they're yeah. out there every weekend. Even Barbara, even Barbara's out there opening bottles. I have to stop her from working. Yeah, yeah. she's so cute. So, yeah. yeah, and uh, Sue Malone, I think, is your uh, general manager yeah, here. Yeah, she's the general manager. Yeah, and she's a great gal too, and always been a great partner for the Chamber of Commerce. So we're appreciative. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, What's your favorite? Amazing. That's amazing. All right, so let's talk oh, a little bit more about the wine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this? we're good. This one was a little bit kind of, um, it had a little bit more sweetness to Sweet. it, which was very interesting. Apricot it's made with, oh, so it has a little more fruit flavors on it. With actual ginger or apricot or just the notes? Notes of ginger and apricot, yeah, yeah. Actual ginger yeah. and apricot. Oh, fascinating. Okay, so it is infused. So it gives it a little more, yeah, it gives oh, it a little more of fascinating. a... fascinating. Uh, first demeanor, mm. and I don't know this because obviously I don't know, yeah. I thought that Pythagorean was... Mythology. So um, anyway, so <laughs> yeah, he's like I was like that's yeah. wrong. Pythagorean sure. theorem, obviously. But um, so the Gewurz demeanor, it's German, right? It's German. Yes. It's like an ice German wine. Grape. Is it like an ice wine normally? Or? They do both. Okay. It depends on the time of year that they harvest the grapes. Okay. Right. Um, also, Gewurz demeanor is. Yeah. Here, let's put them on. Uh, Barbara, yeah, thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Traditionally, a, yeah. thank you so much. Traditionally, a more sweet wine. This is a dry version of it. Okay. Mm. So drier at least. It's yeah, a lot you know usually a decent sweet. amount sweeter. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm sure there is a joke in there with Pythagoras. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very ge geometric wine. Yes. Like <laughs> there's, right. something, there's a better joke in there. Do let us know in the comments. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, have, we have a different angle on that one. I'm so. feeling a little bit <laughs> X squared. Did you hear him? Oh, there yeah. we go. Yeah. A different angle on that one. That was good. I didn't <laughs> that is a, that is a cute joke. A uh, cute. Uh, I spent a lot of time here, so day. I don't mean to be too obtuse. So, oh, here, so. My hey. God. <laughs> is the wine kicking in? Is that the Long Island iced tea or the wine kicking in? I'm not sure. It's the flounder. <laughs> yeah. So cheers with the red wine. Cheers. Yeah. So the Pythagoras, it's a Bordeaux blend. Okay. So it is a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Petit Verdot, Malbec, and Merlot. Ah, oh, fascinating. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so it's a blend of multiple wines. Yeah, yeah there's a good is amount this of grapes normal? in there. Like, does this usually happen, or is this uh, more of a Pinder? Uh, yeah, uh, most most vineyards will make at least like a couple blends. Okay. So this is our. It's a dry table wine, so it's like a like a dinner wine. Right. Good with steak, red meats, things of that nature. Yeah, really. It has mm -hmm. a very deep taste to yes. it, and mm -hmm. I think it's good for for company, as you mentioned, with the heavy foods. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 
It, it, it does taste like the typical dinner wine that you would have in like a Greek taverna. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's not too dry, so it's nice in the middle. They're very well balanced wines, I have to say. Mm. They really do. Yeah, and Cab Franc is one of my favorite wines. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had a Cab, like no. a real Cab Franc? It's Cab Franc. so good. It's like a, it's a Cabernet, but it's like it feels, you know, like smoother. Oh, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is another one of our of our big red wines, also yeah. the Cab Franc. It's so for a job. wine start, for someone who doesn't know much about wine, wh which of the three would you recommend someone starting? with I would probably recommend the white blend all right so let's zoom in on this so people see it and you distribute yeah. all over the United States or where uh, we're able to ship to 40 states okay mm. so most of the country we ship to up. we're yeah. trying to expand our distribution mm -hmm. right now also yeah. so for restaurant stores I know we go out to at least Manhattan yep so and I think in parts of Florida as well yeah are you servicing other restaurants in in the Long Island area yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah there are a few. There are definitely some. Uh, How about here in Port Jeff? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Yeah. So do let us know if you know a, a, a great restaurant here that has Pindar. Yeah, uh, they, uh, I was going to say, I think where we just came from, Rubo, yeah. I think they have Pominok and they had a different one. They have two. And so they'll carry, because there's, again, there's like 60 different ones. Mm. So I think they all like to carry a little bit of different, you know, then you're to spread the love. Fascinating. So <laughs> which one is your favorite out of the three? It's my favorite, and I think it's just because it was hot as it yeah. was the first one. For me, it was as well. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I, I finished it already. So I know, it's so, so good. It was really yeah. refreshing, and it felt so good after coming right. in from the sun. So that was my favorite. But I like all three. So, yeah, the, the first one, uh, which one's the first one again? Point it out. The this white one. blend, yes. Yeah. So this white blend is super refreshing. I think uh, for summer, it's just perfect. And combining it with the, that flounder or scallops yeah. that we have, I it think. Was, it was awesome. It's the best thing ever. I would even splash it on a good sangria or something like that. Yeah, yeah it would make it. a good white sangria as well, yeah. Oh, well. that's a good idea. And if you were to recommend one wine for someone who uh, wants to really splurge, what would you recommend? for? for Definitely Gewürztraminer, yeah. Okay. It's one of the best wines I personally ever had, and I'm not just saying that because I work here. So <laughs> yeah. That's an objective opinion. Mm. So. <laughs> right, right. Thank you so much again for showing yeah, us around the wines. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you I'll so much. I'll be coming much. back for, nice for this one. You. Yeah. <laughs> we're open seven days a week. So. And let me grab the mic over here. All right. All right. So we will be continuing on with our adventure. Have a great day, man. Thank you. Okay, stay safe. Thank you. And uh, on the way out, feel free to show a little bit more of the wines as we're passing through. There are some. Yes. Hey. yes. So, Cliff, shoot as uh, we're showing. So, uh, hold on. i got to put this. The first one, yeah. Can you repeat the name of the store again? You've gotten a few people going, what's that wine store again? We'll it's show it. Pendar. Yes. So let's show over right. here. It's called Pendar, uh -huh. and Pendar is the son of the original winemaker, Dr. Damiano. So his, right. it, his name is Pendar. Yes. Does anybody know where the grapes come from that they get? Uh, here, they grow Long them. Island. They grow them. Okay, because that they was grow their, question they from They grow their grapes. And right. in fact, they grow, they're one of the largest vineyards, so they sell a lot of the grapes to the other vineyards right. on Long Island. Yeah, educational purposes wanted to know where the grapes are. Yeah, they're from here. Because, you know, some of the vineyards, right, they bring the grapes in. Yeah, yeah. Places. Well, a lot of, like I said, the, some of the smaller vineyards on Long Island will buy from the larger vineyards on Long Island, but they're from Long Island. Mm. And it's just, it's just, a, when you go further, you'll see it's just a great, Grape growing environment. All right, so now we're going to head back to the water. The water, okay. <laughs> we're and learning all the Long Island accent. Yes. Long Island. <laughs> yeah, Long Island. You got to get a bacon, egg, and cheese on a roll. You I mean, I, I must say this place is gorgeous. Gorgeous, darling. <laughs> gorgeous. This is another cute, uh, this is another cute, okay. like ice cream, chocolate, fudge, caramel shop it's called Kilwins. They're all over Long Island, mm. but there's one right here. Um, so you can't go wrong. You just kind of explore, pop in, like you were saying. There's um, right. on the other side a bunch of really cute boutiques. More there of the is. shopping, uh, the taboo earring shop over there, and a lot of actually holistic and well-being places. Mm -hmm. Some um, massages and some like uh, holistic dog food. Yes, East Main Street is very charming. Uh, I yeah. recommend walking through there as yes. well. So let's show a little bit of, of, of the front. Um, here we get to see the, the ferry. So let's show the ferry in front of us. Uh, and this is the Park City Ferry, which is one of the larger ferries. There's three main ferries that stop by here, uh, yeah. heading over to Bridgeport. And this connection was here since the mid 1800s, opened up by one of the most famous New Yorkers. A lot of people know him as the greatest showman. <laughs> Starring Hugh Jackman, he played P.T. Barnum 
and he was the one who opened up this ferry. Originally, he was going up up the circus over here, but the town went amok and said, oh, hell no. Yeah. No elephants over here. Yeah, a lot of Long Island towns do that. Like, what? You're already what here? So you see the P.T. Barnum ferry right there. You can see the other one is the P.T. Barnum. So he grew up in Bridgeport, and he ended up living his final days in Bridgeport. Yeah. And he wanted to connect Long Island with Bridgeport, Connecticut, and hence he started this ferry boat company that still runs to this day with his namesake right next to it. Right next to the Park City, we have the P.T. Barnum. And it's truly just a great experience, even just to get on and ride it for, you know, to and from. It's, right. it's so pretty going across the sound, and it's an easy ride. You get out, you get up on top, you get some sun. Right. See oh, interesting. So I've I never taken the fr uh, ferry before. How long is it to get to Connecticut? So it's an hour, and yeah. it's about an hour and 20 minutes. Oh, wow. Um, okay. And you can take your car or not. Um, and there's another great little secret I'll tell you about ferries, car ferries in particular. Mm -hmm. When you're on the North Fork or the South Fork, a lot of people think you have to drive back to the middle to get to go to and from. Mm -hmm. But there's actually Shelter Island in the middle, and you, there's two different little car ferries. Falls over here? Yeah. yeah. There's two different little car ferries that connect, yeah. each about 10 minutes. They're each run by different families, so the prices mm -hmm. are different. Right. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> yeah. And it's cash. Uh, but it's great. You take a little car ferry and you can go straight from the vineyards to the Hamptons or the Hamptons to the vineyards. But this is Danford's. So um, this is our final stop over yes. here. Very <laughs> hot and happening, especially on the weekends. Right. They'll have live music out here and everyone's vibing, having margaritas or tropical drinks or Long Island iced teas. Mm. And so let's show yeah. the, the sign. Also very popular yeah. for weddings. Mm. Uh, special occasions, brunch, events, and it is a hotel. And let's pause over here because I want to show this this guy over here. Here's one of the boys, many of them who worked at the shipbuilding industry. It's built in his honor. Uh, there was two main families that built ships here, the Bales and the Mathers. And the Mathers were extremely well traveled, so it's crazy looking at their photos. Uh, Port Jefferson Historical Society has a bunch of photos. Pay them a visit or go online, check them out. But I just want to read this quote. It sounds a lot like Ernest Hemingway, but it's made by someone else. It says, I must down to the seas again, for the call of the running tide is a wild call and a clear call that may not be denied. John Mansfield, Mansfield in 1878. All right, so All right, so we're gonna uh, grab a table by yes. the water. Right, I'll let you take the lead yeah, for a little bit. Yeah, come on in. So again, this place transforms from winter to summer, and during the summer, they set up this entire dock. You sit on the side, you sit on the railing. They have live music right there, and one of the favorite things for people to watch the fairies come and go. So I thought we'd sit here in the shade. Yes, we Is should. Is that okay? Sit. Yes, <laughs> I know. Are you we, sure you want to get a 10? I've got it. Yeah. I think I got it at Ruvo. I was like, let's, yes. Uh, let's, let's squeeze over here. Let's move yeah, over. Yes, so yeah. we can see the water. So we, the we water. Give, we give uh, Aiden also a little bit of shade. Everyone, again, yeah. leave a bunch of hearts for Aiden. He's been doing a great job. Uh, leave a bunch of hearts for our sound guy. A lot of people don't know that we have a sound guy because we have an extensive amount of setups. So please remind me of your name. Jeff. Jeff. And let's point the camera quickly at Jeff, Aiden. Show Jeff over here. <laughs> That's our sound guy. <laughs> and then we have a, a, a slew of people right behind the scenes, but we can't show everyone because we, yes. can't, we can't show the entire kitchen. That's true. Yeah. Okay, and you know, so we also have a great team at Discover Long Island. I've yeah. got Bree and Chris here from Discover Long Island, and they're on, you know, we have Instagram. We also have two TikTok channels. Oh, yeah. So do tell us about the TikTok because it's, uh, you guys are doing a very good job at showing the tiny little tips and secrets. Thank of, you. It's funny. My daughter will send me a text and she'll be like with a TikTok and say, why haven't you taken me to this place yet? Mm -hmm. um, it's very popular. So we have Long Island, New York, TikTok, mm -hmm. and we have about 68,000 followers on that and 700,000 views. So it's very popular. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to get to know our team, we have the Discover Long Island TikTok as mm -hmm. well. And we just did a great uh, duet with uh, Whitey18, who was the TikTok phenomenon over the last weekend. You'll have to you'll have to google it to see but mm. um but yeah we, we're out there trying to tell you all the local places to go and and let you have the best long island experience you can have whether That's you're amazing. a local or a visitor 
Either that's, way. So check, the, check that out. Uh, also, I'm at Ariel Vieira on TikTok as well. So if you want to see my TikToks, I'll, I'll, we'll be showing a few Long Island things as well. Uh, feel free to ask us any questions. The walking portion has ended. Now we're sitting down uh, before we canoe over. <laughs> yeah. For part two, no, I'm joking around. We're not actually gonna not, not gonna canoe at least not for this episode. You but, never know. We still have to long enough. Uh, we're just gonna dive in. So yeah, yeah, you can see Connecticut. Uh, so no, you sit, can't see it. So over here with us if you can. You probably can't yeah. see Connecticut because the island comes right here. Um, but once you get past here, you, you can. In fact, um, one of my favorite things to do there's a beach around here uh, called Cedar Beach. And I go every 4th of mm. July because it's so great. You see the fireworks from Port Jeff, obviously, but then you also can see all the fireworks from the coastline of Connecticut all going off across the sound. Oh, that's fascinating. And it's really magical. Yeah. It, I mean, again, coming from I'm a desert person, mm. anything you can do around the water makes it so special. Mm. People come here with their kids with the ice cream, and they just watch the ferries come and go. Or Fascinating. You grew up in the place... Uh devoid of water i know <laughs> no, and everyone makes fun of me here all the long islanders are like what what is your deal it's our normal life it's, it's just calm down i'm like no it's amazing you don't know how lucky you are to live to be right. from here and uh, and we do there's 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 truly endless places to go every weekend we're out and about doing fun things and again just the proximity to new york city mm. you know and and being able to come back and forth is it's truly magical wendy said beautiful Love it. Amazing to see. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Winnie. I'm glad you like it. Look, uh, we got you a gift. Oh, no, you guys didn't have to. Oh, no. <laughs> we That's have so to awesome. leave you with a, yeah, with a great Long Island That's momentum. Amazing. That's yeah. wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Thank you for Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, I appreciate this. Pindar. I was like, we got to get you something. To I'm do. really going to enjoy this. I'm going to make a, <laughs> to a very, his bye. Yes. I'm going to accompany this with some scallops at home. Yes. <laughs> so, so much. I think we're going to have like a cocktail, right, yes. coming. Yeah. So there's, and there's some food. Yeah. Oh, are we gonna, try, there is one more thing food, yeah. I really wanted one, you to try, right. of course, which is special to us. But um, it's, oh, crucial to, it's crucial to the economy of basically the Mid-Atlantic <laughs> and New England. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, first of all, here comes our drinks because cool. you were saying earlier about Long Island wine country. Hi. Thank you. Yeah, Hi. Thank you. Thank you so much. Long, I'll just do this so you can. Long that. Island Wine Country, thank you. And in particular, rosé, because mm. rosé is the official drink of the Hamptons. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it is rosé season. It's rosé season. Yeah. I mean, we say rosé all day. <laughs> but, you know, touché. summer. <laughs> touché. <laughs> so, come on out. Come on out. Here's, and here is our signature food, which we had to, oh, had to experience. There's your lobster. Ooh, lobster, the lobster roll, roll. and the salmon burger. Salmon, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, but the lobster <laughs> roll is really what Long Island is known for, right? right? right. Yeah, and the exactly. rosé. And the rosé, This is right. how you know, this is the perfect Long Island meal, is you get a lobster roll, glass of rosé, mm -hmm. and then you look, you totally blend in. You look just like a local. All I'm going to need is the sweater wrapped up around as <laughs> yeah. a scarf. Yeah, Maybe. yeah, I mean, yeah, you can be preppy, but you know what? It's that's, like, that's, part, that's one part of Long Island, yeah, not, that, all, not everything. Yeah, Island. but you know, you yeah. could also just be in your swimsuit. <laughs> right, you can, yes. And you know, now uh, wines are back by the can. Hmm? You know, that's that's popular again, canned wines. Oh, fascinating. You know what else is back? Boxed wines. Boxed wine, interesting. So it's not bad wine it's, anymore. It's not, there's no judgment after 2020, <laughs> right? There's like Precisely. box yeah. wine, sweatpants, Precisely. no one judges you. But, um, but yeah, it's great, so let's, let's dig in. I, I also just want to briefly, because I'm getting a little bit distracted, it's car, cool seeing the cars go yeah. inside. Yeah. So, Joe, let's show a little bit of the cars going inside. Yeah. And, and let me tell you, it is yeah. an art form, being able That's to amazing. load and unload yeah. this ferry. The, yeah. the, it's a lot of kids, actually, right. the people that work on the ferry. And they know exactly which lane, based on the weight of your car right. and the height of your car, to put you in to balance the ferry yeah. out. And they, they line you up, and then they put you, and when you get in, they tell you whether you're upstairs or downstairs. And, uh, it's really exciting. It yeah, they do a good job. Oh, Ronald says, lunch 2.0. Yeah, lunch yes. 2.0, yes. Mm -hmm. Two lunches. So oh, I do want to try just a, a tiny bit of that. Yeah, you so dig let's, in. let's split a little bit. Yeah, is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. No, we're just going to share if that's okay. That's what we do. I'm just going to take a little bite of that. I just want the lobster. So ooh, this is a really packed lobster mm -hmm. right over here. So we have uh, lots of lobster meat. And we have this uh, iconic bread that's... To me, it feels like a Texas toast, but probably there's a more local name for yeah, it. Yeah, it's a roll. 
It's a roll, okay. Yeah, they just call it a roll. Lobster, lobster uh, on a roll. And then uh, the designation is some of them have butter and some of them are made with mayonnaise. This right. is the mayonnaise one. Yes, and mm -hmm. some of them have some more greenery in them too. Yes. And this one is a pure, mostly. I mean, it gets pure. a little bit of lettuce, but... Um, a little bit less, a little bit of mayonnaise. Each one is a little bit different. Let's try it out. Okay. I mean, this is so good. Mm. You know, it's the simplicity of it, right? Right. You taste the freshness. It's just a classic, classic, classic sandwich mm -hmm. that you can have here mm -hmm. in anywhere in this area of the U.S. But mm -hmm. Long Island, there's so many examples of great uh, lobster rolls. As you, you already mentioned a few uh, during our mm -hmm. walk, so maybe almost you remember, anywhere, yeah. Almost anywhere you go. Especially in the summer, they'll have a lobster roll on the menu. Mm -hmm. Some pizza places you go to, they have like a lobster roll. <laughs> They're like, okay, <laughs> throw right, it in. Right, right, right. What were you gonna say, Cliff? BA says, "Oh my, that mm -hmm. looks delicious." Wendy, yum, delicious. It is so delicious. B, right. a lobster on a row. <laughs> lobster on the row. No, lobster. 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 Yes. <laughs> from New England. Here's a here's a secret tip I will tell you is this is a Long Island thing, and I learned because I'm a transplant, right? Mm -hmm. You never say that you're in Long Island. Right. Long Islanders, it makes their head explode because you're on an sense. island, <laughs> you're right? Close. You are on an island. You are not in an island. <laughs> so if you if you want to look like a local and hang with the, hang with the people, you say, yeah, I'm on, you're on Long Island. But as the perspective of someone from Queens, yes. I don't go onto yeah. Long Island. I go into Long Island. Oh, no, you're there on an go. island. Boom. But, but here's where I, here's, <laughs> well, I, get, I, I yes, but here's where I, I also, here's yeah. where it flips and where yeah. I, and where I agree with you, yeah. but not necessarily all native Long Islanders, yeah. is they also say they're online, not in line. Mm. And I'm like, no, now that's where, that's where you lose me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, now you're, you're in a line. Yeah. You're not on a line. There's no line. <laughs> right, right. You're taking it too far. You're then. in a line. Yeah. Kind, so, of, kind of like the Bronx. The Bronx. Yeah, you, you don't say Bronx. You can't say Bronx. You gotta say the Bronx, yeah. You can't say the Bronx. Like the city. As us in Queens like to say, dead ass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and, and that's the other thing is uh, to Long Islanders, there's yeah. no other city in the world other than New York City. <laughs> right, So right. we don't say New York City. We say the city. Right, right, exactly. You don't even yeah. have to say the name of it because mm -hmm. you're like, oh, are you in the city? The city? It's our city. Is there We're city. another city? Right. <laughs> I know. To, to New Yorkers, the answer is no. Right, right. Precisely. It's the center of the universe. <laughs> Precisely. And a lot of people here, they work in the city. I mean, during normal times, we work, right. and, and the train, you're talking people that commute two, two and a half hours each way mm -hmm. to work in the city. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people do. So do ask us any questions uh, for these final 10 minutes. Uh, feel free to ask anything that you would like about Long Island. Uh, any secrets, any tips, yeah. tricks. Yeah. Feel free to ask right to now. visit soon. Yes. Soon, yes. Yeah, like soon, like exclamation point Yes, soon. please go to discoverlongisland.com. We have um, itinerary ideas for you. We have two, three, five days based on what you want to do, whether you're a family, whether you're single, whether you're a foodie. Um, we have a bunch of different itinerary suggestions for you that right. can be customized. And Jenny wants to know if you know anything about Palmer venues. Palmer? Yeah. Yeah, Palmer's great. In fact, again, so our podcast, Long Island Tea, that is on anywhere you get podcasts, Spotify, Audible, Apple, Google, um, I highly recommend you listen to it. It's sponsored by Long Island Wine Country. So we actually drink uh, Long Island wine every single week mm -hmm. on the show. And we had a Palmer the other day. It's great. It's on the North Fork. Um, my thing that I know about Palmer is that they have this great pizza oven. <laughs> so when you go there, not all the vineyards have food. Yeah. Um, and some, some are dog friendly, some are kid friendly. You know, you have to kind of know what you what experience you want mm -hmm. and then pick the one that's right for you. But Palmer is great. They're so beautiful. As people don't realize, they're also just gorgeous to visit. Right. Um, and Palmer is a great one. We had a lovely, I think it was a Sauvignon Blanc um, that I've had there a couple of times. And they have a delicious pizza. So do tell us if you want to see a wine episode because it gets crazy to do uh, wine hopping, wine, vineyard hopping in yes. Long Island. Because yeah. the cool thing is all these vineyards, A, they're selling flights uh, of wine, and B, they have great wine cocktails. And they're both very inexpensive compared to drinking the wine at a restaurant or a in the city. It's really, it's amazing so because... get a des designated driver and 100%, enjoy. Yeah. 100%. But there's so many. If you go to like Napa or Sonoma, there's a few and they're spread out. Yeah. Where in the North Fork, they're all very pretty much close, mm -hmm. and you can have a really awesome experience. You should still get a driver, of course, 
But um, and there's just an incredible culinary scene there to go with the wines mm. as well. Um, and a lot of celeb hopping. Uh, Brie on my team, she's always spotting celebs. Right. Especially from like the Long Island reality shows like Summer House, which is filmed in the Hamptons, mm -hmm. or there's the, um, what's the real estate one, Brie? There's like million. million, there's like a real, they sell Hamptons dollar real lawsuit. estate, um, yeah. but it's, yeah. It's a different one. So let's try this uh, salmon burger. Okay. Right here. I'm gonna here. keep eating, enjoying we this. We have a beautiful salmon burger with uh, what appears to be a brioche bun. Yeah, it's a brioche bun. Mm. And of course, you can't go wrong with some avocados as well. Mm -hmm. Not local because avocados don't grow in this area. But the salmon may be, maybe close by. All right, let's try this out. Mm. You will not leave Long Island hungry. Mm. But you'll leave heavier. <laughs> maybe. Mm -hmm. Warm. Mm -hmm. But we walked a lot. Mm. So. That is very good. Yeah, you like it? Very tender. And uh, it's it's perfectly charred, so it tastes like a hamburger. Um, and I, I also love the salmon. Salmon itself can't go wrong with New York City or New York, sorry, New York salmon, because the entire area has great salmon access to it. Um, and also, just the combination with the brioche bun is so soft. This is a really great seafood burger. Oh, I'm so glad you yeah, like it. Yeah, I'm actually really so pleasantly surprised. And, you know, it's funny. These, these are hard to do as well. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's funny you say New York City because again. Because, There's, yeah, that's always in my mind in the New York State since we're so close. Yeah, but it's such yeah. a connection. Right. And I think even from, you know, New York State is a huge state, mm -hmm. right? And I have wonderful counterparts. We have great destinations all around New York State. But the connection between Long Island and New York City is so special that people here grew up going there and vice versa, work there all the time. A lot of our kids grow up mm -hmm. and go to the city and live there and work there. And um, we call it our city, and I think it's so it's so important that we have this 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 synergy and this awesome connection that we feel part of it, 100. percent Right, right, and also there's a lot of people who live in Long Island and commute to the city as well, yeah. and vice versa as well. We call it yeah. um, we call Long Island from the international markets, especially because a lot of people don't understand where Long Island is. We call ourselves New York City's beachfront backyard. Oh, that's amazing. So <laughs> do let us know if there's any questions we also on Facebook. We do have a Facebook. couple of questions yeah. of someone who's asking questions about uh, the vineyards. Mm -hmm. And like if you want to spend a day on the vineyards, you may not want to drive your car if mm -hmm. you're going to a lot of vineyards. What do you do? So the Long Island Railroad does and let go. us know who asked that as well. Right, I'm sorry. Yeah. That was Jimmy. Jimmy. Hey, okay. Jimmy. Um, so great question, Jimmy. The Long Island Railroad does go all the way to Greenport, which is the downtown where the vineyards are accessible and walkable, mm -hmm. which is the, the last stop. Um, and they actually have Long Island Railroad packages, mm. which will like one of the ones does include a tasting at Pindar and, it, and a lunch at Claudio's and it'll include the whole thing. You only buy one price, right. um, which is terrific. But you can also there are bus tours. There are tours from New York City. Oh, cool. Okay. That will take you out. Several yeah. of them. They'll take you out. Diane wants to know if she can have her Long Island wine shipped to the UK. I, I don't think so because of liquor laws. Oh, fascinating. Yeah, and it's not because the distributors don't want to, no. but it's because of United States liquor laws that even sometimes between states, it gets very complicated based on that state's liquor laws. I have the solution, actually. Oh. Come visit. Yeah, just come visit. <laughs> Try and you know person. what? And, and it's yeah, Diane, right, right? From the UK? Yeah. So, Diane, we get 1.2 million visitors a year from the UK. UK mm. is our number one international market. So please come visit us. We are used to welcoming you and your family, and you'll have a great time. That's amazing. And uh, yeah, let's keep it. Let's keep on uh, answering yeah, this any is questions. Fun. Yeah, yeah. Robert wants to know if um, European people drink American wine. Well, it's funny. They didn't used to drink California wines. Remember that? Mm. In the right. 60s, a Europeans were like, oh, Cal there's a whole movie about it. Um, they did this, this blind si tasting. Sideways. Well, no, before this, Sideways, them, yeah. uh, Sideways was a movie. This is a true documentary movie, though. Oh, yes, it came out recently, right? That, yeah, yeah. That, that they actually did California. People would kind of snub California wines in the yeah. 60s, and they did a blind tasting in France and California won, and then it was like an uproar. Everyone freaked out. But, um, but yes, I think that if you appreciate wine, if, if you really do enjoy and appreciate wine you will enjoy and appreciate long island wines this is off topic a little bit but it's still long island okay adam's very curious about fire island mm -hmm. and how long does it get to take to travel around fire island and that's a great question because fire island is so expansive right. with so many yeah. towns and, and any long island question is welcome so ask anything but fire island is awesome again it's on the south shore so from here 
and, and it's and it's difficult to explain. I remember being a transplant and not knowing kind of how to experience and what it means because there are 19 different villages on Fire Island alone. And so there's one. Bye to the ferry. We gotta wave to them. You're bleeping. <laughs> right, right, indeed. <laughs> See, we didn't the, say Masonic Lodge. The Mason strike again. <laughs> I know, you didn't say it. It's the fairy. Let me, let me grab the comments. I would love to say yeah. hi to a bunch of people at the same time. While you're doing that, yeah. I'll say Fire Island real quick. Uh, it's really awesome. So you can get there several different ways. If you go from, you know, Bay Shore, uh, you get to the family area, right. which is like Ocean Beach and Kismet, and it's more family friendly. Or if you go right here, I'll go 20 minutes and we'll go from Sayville. And there's two communities, one called Cherry Grove and one called The Pines, and they're amazing LGBTQ communities. So, and one is very like rambunctious and crazy, and the other one's very like upper echelon LGBTQ quiet. Used to have a nude beach. It does still have a nude beach. I was there a couple years. They are still nude. And by the way, there's a famous story. Do you yeah. know the story? No. Every Fourth uh, of July. Sorry to interrupt. Let's let's uh, say hi to the Facebook okay. viewers. So, uh, if we can grab a secondary phone to see uh, hello to Facebook real quick. Okay. And uh, okay, so we're. So I was yeah. just gonna say, there's a famous story that happened in the '70s, and it still happens every year on the Fourth of July. Right. Where Cherry Grove is a crazy LGBT community and the Pines is very quiet LGBTQ and they didn't want they didn't like to intertwine. So one year there's Cherry Grove filled a whole ferry and they invaded mm. the Pines right. and came over and had a huge party. Oh, that's me. Yeah. And uh, and now every Fourth of July they have the Great Invasion and they reenact it and it's a huge party and you can't get a room there. It's sold out. You have to buy it years in advance. And the whole place is the invasion. It's a wonderful party. Oh my God, that sounds amazing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's Fourth really... of July, Fire Island is a place to be. <laughs> and it, it's also a place with very deep history uh, related to the LGBT communities uh, in New York City and all around. Mm -hmm. So it's a very interesting place as well. And it's 20 minutes yeah. from here, and it's a 20 minute ferry ride. And then you're there, and it's all walkable. You walk to the incredible right. ocean. It's just amazing. Right. And it's switch gears party again. center. Okay. So let me uh, just say hi to a bunch of people, and then okay. we'll go right to Facebook. Sure. Uh, hello, CB says thank you. Discover Long Island. Yes, it's so awesome collaborating with you thank guys. Thank you. Uh, they're slowly getting away. Yes, the the, the, the ferry's slowly fun. getting away. Any nice coffee shops in LI? Uh, very quick, mention one in a different town that you like. Uh, there's a lot of coffee shops. In fact, there's another one right here, actually called Toast. Toast. And it's cool. wonderful. Any TV shows filmed in Long Island from, you know, The Affair? Oh, a million TV shows are filmed here, actually. I mean, Jaws was, movies are filmed here. Right. Um, the Godfather was filmed here. Um, it, almost any show you watch these days, you'll see Long Island on there. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Europeans are now drinking American wines. Yes, because <laughs> California was recently named one of the best wines, and Long Island might be after that. So stick to it. You want uh, it here first. Uh, how is nightlife in Long Island? Go for it. So nightlife depends George on asked. nightlife yeah. depends on where you are. So in Huntington, where you were last yeah. time, the Paramount Theater is known for being one of the top theaters in the country for music. Yeah. Um, Jones Beach Theater in Jones Beach. If you have not, it's got to be on everyone's bucket list. Right. If you have not, have you ever seen a show in Jones Beach Theater? No, no. Oh yeah, I have. Uh, I've seen Sticks. Oh, uh, which is that's really so wonderful. cool. Yeah. That's really awesome. <laughs> So it depends on where you are. Patchogue is great nightlife, but it depends. Like there are some villages like this, it's quiet at mm -hmm. night, and that's the way people like it. So you know where to go if you know what to do. Right, and you could do you could uh, bundle a few things at the at the same day if you're taking yeah. a day trip here. Mm -hmm. And Scott says he's coming to Danfords the when exactly when he gets paid. Yay! Good. <laughs> so enjoy it. All right, now let's say hi to Facebook. Okay, so yeah. Kay, she'd like to know if we could do a wine tasting tour. Yes, yes mm -hmm. as a program. Oh, okay, great. Wine tasting tour. Do vote for it right now. Let us know. And what else are people saying? Obviously? Um, Helen wants to know if lobster is expensive. Is lobster expensive? It is. This lobster roll, usually they run in anywhere from 25 to $35 for a lobster roll. John wants to know if um, you can um, get lobster, like is lobster indigenous on Long Island or do you have to go somewhere else nope. for it? It's, a, this is from, it's uh, fished here nearby as well. Uh, so they both have uh, local, and then they go up to New England yeah. as well. At one time, we um, had a problem. There was a shortage of lost lobster yes. because of the malathion. Yeah, and you know, I was going to tell you something that it's it's gone away for a couple of years because of just the way the cycle and the water. But there's a thing called Peconic Bay scallops. Right. Have you ever had them? No, not yet. Oh my God, Ariel! I'd never heard of them until I yeah. came here. They're small. They're like little baby, and they're like candy. 
Oh, they're they're like the tiny most candy delicious, skeletons. amazing, and they'll serve them a lot in the restaurants. But the last couple of seasons have not been good for the for the harvesting. Right. So we're hoping that this year, based on the lack of you know like you know tourists or whatever going through here, but it's like um, we're hoping that they come back. There's nitrogen. There was a water thing. There was a there was like an algae. Anyway, mm. conic bay scallops are they're only here in the Bacani Bay, which is the North Fork. I would love to have those. those yeah, we'll sound get, amazing. We'll make sure. well, <laughs> sounds I'll, like I'll, like a, like a bag of potato chips. Yeah, and they're in the scallops. fall. They're in the yeah. fall. It's like Octoberish when they yeah. harvest. So I'll let you know. Okay, so we're staying live for three more minutes. Ask questions. A lot of people yeah. uh, want to know about um, are we going to see fireworks again? And if we're going to see them on Long Island, you know, yeah. New Yorkers want to know where we'll see them. Right, July 4th, are, are fireworks happening? I think so. Yeah. I, you know, it's like everything that there's so much pent up demand and there was so much, like with the air show that we had, we didn't have last year, mm -hmm. there's always synonymous to the kickoff to summer. I think fireworks, Long Islanders love their 4th of July. In my opinion, there's no better place to be on the planet than right. Long Island during the 4th of July because you know what? Mm -hmm. Did you know that Long Island has Suffolk County where we're in? largest um, population of veterans of any any other place in America. Oh, fascinating. And so really, yeah. you'll see American flags everywhere. You feel that really community and that, that gratefulness. So Long Island uh, is really a magical place to be 4th of July. And also, George Washington slept and has stepped foot in many parts of this area. Yeah, Long and, and yeah. Teddy Roosevelt has his home here. Yeah. Uh, not in Port Jefferson, but um, in Oyster Bay. He's, it's the only national park on Long Island. Yeah. Well, there is uh, a few historic photos where you can see Teddy Roosevelt docking here yes. at Port Jeff. And also yeah. that's why he quarantined. Back then, he had to quarantine in Montauk, which is why the, oh, the oldest yeah. cattle farm in America is in Montauk called Deep Hollow because of Teddy Roosevelt. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so there's a Roosevelt connection. <laughs> yeah. Claire hopes that the crew will get to eat. You guys, we're going to feed the crew. We feed, love the crew. Yes. I don't know. A lot of people <laughs> are saying it. We're ordering, we're ordering five lobster rolls or, or seven lobster rolls. <laughs> they don't all get a bottle of wine like Ariel does, but they're going to eat. <laughs> <laughs> we'll share the wine. <laughs> Is there some kind of Fire Island contest? I think it's the invasion. I think it's what they're talking about. There's gotcha. the invasion of Fire Island. Um, but no, there's not initially a contest. All right. We'll answer four more questions. Go. Wow. One second. And say hi to a few people. Wow, right we got to go to um, to uh, YouTube. Yeah, we should say hello to a few people. Uh, 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 Lorraine says aloha. Ooh. I've been oh, certainly Lorraine, enjoying aloha. this tour. Oh, oh thank you, Lorraine. I, I will tell you, Lorraine. Um, the, Lorraine is. Lorraine? Yeah, Lorraine. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah. So, Dr. Beach, who is the foremost expert on beaches, just mm -hmm. came out with his top beaches in the country. And Cooper's Beach in the Hamptons was number two. And the beach in Hawaii was number one. Oh my God. So you want okay, you beat Lorraine. us out, but the second best beach in the entire country is right here on Long Island. So Lorraine, when you're visiting uh, later in August, because I know you're coming here, uh, do do I consider you checking it out. Cooper's Beach, you have to tell us if it's, if <laughs> yeah, it's, tell if us. it's legit. <laughs> tell us what you think compared to Hawaii. Uh, so Marilyn says, how, how do the locals feel about being invaded by all the tourists? That's yeah, an easy answer. you know, it's a great question and it depends. And I think the further east you yeah. go, sometimes it can get really congested, like mm -hmm. we were talking about. Right. But when you come to some of these other villages that don't get flooded with tourists, they love it. I mean, they these these business owners, eighty per, more than eighty percent of our tourism industry here are small businesses. They're mom and pop owned businesses, mm -hmm. and so we need you, especially after last year. We need your help. Port Jefferson is also very used to it for the past two hundred years. As we mentioned, there's there was Hotel Square. This was, has always been a, a point for transient visitors uh, for more than 200 years. Uh, and also, it's a plot point in the affair, for at least for Montauk. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's so true. <laughs> With tourists, yeah. So this is a, like a multiple person question. We've been getting this. Have you ever met the... Uh, Marilyn, I'm, gonna, I'm seeing her as the, the latest one. Have you ever met Billy... Joel. Oh my God, Marilyn. <laughs> this is my obsession, okay? I was not considered a Long Islander. I saw my first Billy Joel concert yeah. at Madison Square Garden. That's all I wanted for Christmas, oh, to cool. go see Billy Joel, because you're not a Long Islander if you don't see him. <laughs> I have not met him, but he's everywhere. He po There's stories where there'll be like a piano that someone put on the curb on the side mm. of the road, and Billy Joel like stops and plays it, and like <laughs> Billy Joel is everywhere. But you know what? Um, Long Island is crawling with celebrities. Howard Stern is here, Billy Crystal, um, Adam, um, what's his name? who would just got to keep that IHOP, Brie. Sandler? Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler. Um, yeah. Christy Brinkley, Brooke Shields, Drew Barrymore. Everybody's here. Mm -hmm. This is the place to be for all this life. You're a celeb spotter. 
This is your place. And there's certain places in Long Island where it is for celeb spotting, like the Hamptons. Yeah. Yeah. But I saw I was in like a random steakhouse, and I saw uh, E E from Entourage. He is like having oh, cool. a Caesar salad because <laughs> he's awesome. from Hot Pog, and I'm like, you never. Know. Oh, because of our proximity to New York City, you know, uh, this is very similar. That's amazing. All right, let's answer one more question. Super yeah. chat. Uh, $20 from Cauliflower Box. Oh, Cauliflower, thank you so much for the generous super chat. That's your second one. Thank you right, so much. Right, Lee. And thank you, sorry uh, to interrupt. Thank you everyone who has super chat in Star Sense. Sorry we can say hi to everyone. This is a special episode where we're doing it with multiple cameras and we're walking around and there's a crazy production. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let's answer one more question. Um, they just yeah. want to know uh, a couple things. Yeah. One is, um, I'm going to ask it in two questions because yeah. we don't have a lot of time, but one is, can you That's tell us cheating, Cliff. I no, know. I'm well, I'm a cheater. <laughs> I'm a cheater. What can I say? Is, tell yeah. us about, just briefly, about some of the other types of shops here. And also, some people have been asking to know about who, who are the crew. Who are the crew? Yeah. All right. So I will tell you, the shops here, the great thing about them is that they're unique and local. This is not a chain place. And that's what makes it so wonderful mm -hmm. is that when you go in, you meet the shop owners, whether you're looking for handbags or clothes or right. wine or cheese or, you know, there's some great places. Any downtown you go to on Long Island, you're, and, and I saw, I've seen several of your episodes, mm -hmm. you're going to meet the locals. And so, you know, I encourage you to please follow us on our YouTube, Discover Long Island NY, and subscribe to us so we can help you every week share some of those stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so check them out on YouTube because they cover Long Island, as I mentioned, in depth. And they actually meet the locals and interview the business owners and et cetera. By the way, Mary, Mary Ann sent 500 stars. Mary Ann, thank you so much for the 500 stars. I appreciate you. 500. Uh, 500 stars is about $5. Thank you That's so much. That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, so uh, the people behind the crew is a combination of two people, uh, two basically exactly. companies. Right. There is Streamcast Network which is on uh, behalf of Cliff. So let's show Cliff real quick. You've seen Cliff. Cliff's our... And He's a Long Islander. I am. Long, He's a no, Long, Long Island. Island. Long Island. Yo, what's up? Want a beer? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> and behind the camera is actually Cliff's son, Aiden, which is really awesome. And we have another cameraman, Joe. So give him hearts. And also the sound guy. We have a bunch of people. And then there's also and Bree Discover and Chris, Long Island. Bree and Chris, come yeah. over here real so quick. So let's uh, come on, real the quick. camera to them. So Bree is our yeah. Instagrammer. She's amazing. And then Chris is our camera guy for Long Island TV. Mm -hmm. They're here. We we love you guys. Let us know what you want to see and hear, and we'll cover it on Long Island TV. And a uh, shout out to Alisa as well, who's been doing behind the scenes yeah. on Urbanist Live Alisa. and Streamcast Network. So <laughs> check it out. Let's uh, uh, <laughs> point the camera. The guy. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I know. There we go. Jeff Thank Sound Guy and Zach. And Zach as well. Lobster rolls for everyone. There we go. Lobster roll for everyone. <laughs> you get a lobster roll. You get Woo, a lobster roll. You, you get, get a lobster, lobster roll. roll. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> and we'll get boats as well after you at the end. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in. Kristen, one more time, where can people find you? Discoverlongisland.com yeah. and on YouTube, Discover Long Island NY. And I'm Ariel. This is Urbanist. Thank you so much for tuning in. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. And we're going to do a huge wave goodbye. So everyone join me as waving goodbye. Kristen, jump in. Ariel, bye-bye. And end stream.